<laughs> you guys got it. Yeah, we got it. Yeah, we got it. Yeah, we got it. Yeah, we're good. You want me to fly over there and help? No, 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 no. You can. <laughs> I just go. Uh, you keep that hey. beard in that chair, brother. Yeah, <laughs> that chair, hey, the beard is looking good, by the way. If I, I must say, I just want to let you guys know that I've upgraded the setup. So it's specifically for this for this interview. Got the Sony camera. So you can see this in. Oh, in that's why you look hey, at I was looking good too. Okay. 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 Yeah. You upgraded from uh, you know, this this little webcam here to the big boy. Uh, you know, that's oh the, yeah, that's big moves. That's yeah, a that's streaming, moves. that's a streaming classic right there. That's mm-hmm. it. So first of all, I just saw the tweet, which is funny, but I appreciate you guys, man, taking the time out of your day, changing your schedule, which is normally streaming, I think, ten hours, twelve hours a day, all day. To you know, like give, it. Like give me two hours like of your it. time. Genu- just seriously, I appreciate it, no and I want to welcome you guys. You guys are like, you guys are technically the third official guest on the new Find Your Breakthrough podcast. You know, by oh, I appreciate so that. I'm excited because like originally the podcast was a different name and stuff when we finally rebranded it, and mm-hmm. now it's kind of like the official like you know in the lab podcast. So you guys are also the first gamers to be on it. So you guys are you guys are just an amazing company right here. Hopefully we can say that. Hey, listen. Well, hold on there, you know what? I mean, well, hold on if, there. If that's the case, then I mean, you, you just changed what? the rules then. You know what I mean? Hey, Nav, I'm letting you know right now. I'm going to just tell you right now. This episode is going to be your best episode. I'm letting you know that right I now. I already know, man. I'm letting you know it right now. Yeah, we're going to have fun. I, I already know. That's why I'm so excited with you guys, to have you guys on it. So whole point of the podcast, is, the slogan within the lab is to find your find your breakthrough. So throughout your lifetime, we want to help people find multiple breakthroughs, right? Small breakthroughs lead to bigger breakthroughs and progress happens in the lab. That's where the whole interconnection comes in. So every day you guys are finding breakthroughs, increasing your aim, winning new tournaments, games, whatever that case may be to work towards your championship. So on this podcast, I want to dive into who you guys are, obviously as brothers. Then I want to talk about the gaming side. I want to talk about the entrepreneur, the business side. And basically what I want to do is I want to allow the the listeners who or telling themselves, man, I want to be the next train J, or I want to be the next, you know, big gamer to come and see this podcast and find inspiration from you guys and find, you know, the knowledge and tips you guys get to be like, damn, maybe I can do this. Maybe I can follow in their footsteps to try and be something like them. So okay. that's, that's where it all comes back to. So it all comes down to, we're gonna have a lot of fun, but for me, it's always like trying to give the learner, the listeners like an opportunity to learn, especially from the guests. Mm-hmm. So what I want to do is I want to throw the mic to you guys, which I know you guys are going to murder this. Anytime I throw the mic to you, you're about to murder it. Just, yo, break it he down. Already just, just, he already knows. He already knows. I already know you guys, he already, he already knows. Like, he already knows. <laughs> just don't hit us with the mic or we he got a knows. problem. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Feel me? So, just give me an introduction. Break down. Your, if someone wants to take the lead or you guys want to take turns, give me the full introduction of each of you guys. And I'll how it works together. Are we gonna do like the intro? Like, what's up? It's your... No, 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 we're not. Oh, gonna oh okay. <laughs> Guess not. Never mind. Yeah, this ain't our platform. Well, you know, uh, for starters, my name is Justin L. Hazard or Jay. You know what I mean? That's handsome man. It's Trey. For sure. From L. D. Hazard. Wow. Uh, we are originally from Pasadena, California. Mm-hmm. Born and raised. Um, should we say the siblings or it, you know what I mean? Like, a, like, 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 should we give them the full? Like, should we, should we do the birth certificate? I mean, you know, I mean, we got, we got, we got four brothers. You know, you know what I mean? Like me, Jay, um, feel me, Devin, Moni, it's four okay. of us. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, and um, we, we, you know, again, going back to come back from Pasadena, like you know, a lot of people that come from Dina, we got so much talent. Everybody always has talent that come from their city, right? Like you always mm-hmm. be like, man, right. I got talent that come from my city, and. We got so much talent that comes from our city, but a lot of people just don't go past that threshold. They just, they, they got the talent, they got the potential. You hear that word potential so much. Mm-hmm. And they just never go past that threshold. And um, for us, just growing up, we just always heard that same term, potential, potential, potential. So um, we started off small, like, like uh, started off with sports. Like, I'll, I'll just be real, man. Sports is how all of us get this, this, this drive. Like, we mm-hmm. all get this drive from sports, yep. right? Um, for me personally, having, having four brothers, uh, our little, our, our, my, my little brother, but his older brother, mm-hmm. right? Devin, uh, he plays, he plays in NFL. He plays for, he played for the Titans, played for the Patriots and, and, the, yeah, Eagles. and the Eagles. And he was on the Eagles too. Um, my oldest brother, uh, he, you know, he doesn't play any sports, but he did back then. Um, myself. Uh, I had a struggle with sports. You know what I mean? Like I, I wasn't, I, I had, we had a sick mom when we was growing up. So our mom was like super sick. Mm-hmm. So we didn't get to go outside. We didn't get to 
go to all like the AAUs and all the other stuff and play element. We didn't, well, I didn't. Okay. I know, didn't either. Um, I didn't get to, he didn't get to. And um, it was a struggle because it was like, dang, you know, you want to do what everybody else is doing. You want to be a great basketball player. You want to go to the league. Like our parents always say, man, I need y'all to train. I need you to go to the league and stuff like that to help change our lives. And you hear that all the time. And you're like, what does that really mean? Like to go to the league? I see Kobe. I see KG. I see all of these guys in the league. But what does that really mean? Most of the time we spent inside the house playing video games because one of us had to always go in the room like every like 20, 25 minutes, go check on my mom and see if she was okay. Make sure she wasn't having a seizure or if, if she didn't have a migraine. Cause we already knew there were stages. Like it was like little right. young stages. Like if she had a migraine or she had, she wasn't feeling good or she was stumbling over the house. We knew like too hot too. Right. Like mm-hmm. somebody had to, and being in California, you know, it's, it's 90 plus a lot. Like it's yep. 80, 90 plus and that heat, it was just a really tough time back then, you know? So we spent a lot of time playing video games, but, you know, still trying to be sports and athletes. Um, I went through my basketball career, my high school career, and and uh, it, it didn't go well. Like, it didn't go well. Uh, I was underdeveloped. So I was super skinny. I tried to play basketball. I ended up, one of my own teammates uh, destroyed my back when he low bridged me. I went, for, I went for a block. He low bridged me. And then I, my, 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 uh, what's it called? Um, right on, right, right where your, uh, your tailbone is right before you get to the butt. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's, right, <laughs> it's right there before you get to the cakes. Um, yeah, that I, thing. I tore that and tore it bad. Mm-hmm. And, um, I was out for the whole year and I never rehabbed it. I was never able to go to rehab. I was never able to. So my mom, you know, my mom did it the, 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 the mom way. They just, Lay on your stomach. Put throw some ice on your back. Yeah, throw yeah, some yeah. ice on it. Just throw some ice on it. But we never rehabbed it. I never did anything for rehab. So for years, it was just, it's been a lingering injury. So um, my, my basketball career and stuff, again, I didn't play AAU. I didn't get to train. I didn't get to go out of elementary. So as soon as I got to high school, that was the first time I actually played organized sports. And um, it was a tough time. So playing basketball, I struggled because I was hurt all the time. And then going to, I went to, finally went to football. And I'm like, all right, I play football. And I was like, you know what? I could do this. Man, I dislocated my finger. You got rocked. <laughs> I, no, 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 no. I didn't get, oh, hold on, hold on. Now, what you saying? What you saying? What you saying? I got rocked? What you saying now, huh? You gonna what you saying? That? You gonna hey, bro, say that? That's how you let into it. <laughs> nah, 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 no, 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 no. I didn't get rocked. Don't, okay? hey, get him. No, no, I didn't get, get rocked. Let me tell you. <laughs> Don't want to talk to you like that. So I dislocated my finger. I went for a tackle. Okay. Again, the term underdeveloped. Mm-hmm. Underdeveloped. I went for a tackle, not really knowing how to tackle like that. You just playing mm-hmm. off of just, just pure, just instinct. Like I go for a tackle, my hand ends up getting stuck within the player's face mask. And you know that, you know that little, the little one right there, yep. that's where my fingers got stuck. Hey. And he was falling and it took my finger and just bent it all. Oh, Ooh. oh. They popped it back in place, but they popped, <laughs> my coach popped it in wrong. So now like forever oh. my fingers dislocated. Unless you know you, unless you get it broke to get it fixed, I ain't doing that. Um, so I had to play with a dislocated finger. Then I ended up tearing a tendon in my shoulder, and then uh, I ended up hyperextending my elbow out of socket, which is still out of socket because Damn, I can't bro. I can't straighten my elbow now. So it was just like little things like that that happened, right? Nap, don't don't now, nap, na- nap, stop. Yeah. Wait, are you laughing at my pain? <laughs> <laughs> you laughing at my face? No. I mean, this podcast is over. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 I'm just hey, gonna chill. let you keep going. Hey, RIP so, headphone users, because that is gonna be so loud for them. So that's gonna be so loud. So it's like I took all these injuries, right? And, and it's, it's it's about to, it's about to lead to something. So I took all mm-hmm. these injuries. And mind you, he's still we're five years apart. So right. I'm in high school, we're five years apart. So he's still, you know, he's still mad young. Like he's still elementary. So I didn't took all these injuries. I'm hurt. Like I, I just remember my senior year, I trained in my junior year. I had trained so hard to get my body back in shape. I had to do it. Like I didn't, my dad was always working. So I couldn't ask him for help. My mom was sick. I couldn't do that. So I spent my little brother, Devin, um, he was literally outside in the field with me working every single day. Like every day he was in the field working. I was doing push-ups. I was doing sit-ups. I was trying to get my body together. Like just like really trying to take it serious and be like, you know what? I'm so far behind everybody else, but I had left Pasadena and I got asked to, and, and I went to this other school in, in, in Ontario that was like, they had won championships. 
uh, the CIF twice. And my cousin was there and he was like, yo, come up here, man. You're going you're gonna to have a better opportunity all this other stuff. And it started off great until all of those injuries happened. And I just went to a mental state like where, where I, I, didn't, I didn't know what my life was for. <laughs> I'm like, like, yo, what is my life for now? Like, I, I didn't, my, my, everybody thought that I was going to go out here and do this amazing stuff. I took injury after injury after injury. And mind you, we're in high school, but these dudes look like, you remember back in the hey, 80s? Babe, like, yeah, so like, you remember, you like, they, they grown. grown. Like, it's like, like Zion, bro. It was like a grown man. Right. I yep. come out there, I'm mm-hmm. 155 pounds. All of these dudes are 205, 210. I'm like, no, no, this is college. I'm not ready for this yet. This is college. This is the <laughs> high school. So I get out, I, I end up going for, a, I went for a tackle. And as I'm going for a tackle, I'm a 155 ambitious outside linebacker. But as I go for the tackle, my own teammate, he goes helmet in first. He's not looking. We're doing, you know, like they have like a blue and gold game or they have like a blue and red game where you play your, the, the, the oh, first yeah, string. Oh, like yeah, squad, yeah, yeah. Plays the second string. Mm-hmm. And you want to give the fans something to see, like, oh, they get hyped up. I get hurt. And that game, that that game, fan, bro, it, it you was just, just can't make it up. I like, went to a mental yeah, space, like I just I just went to a just a mental space where I was like, like, like God, why are you doing this to me? Mm-hmm. Like you see how hard I'm trying to make my family proud. Like I'm trying my best. I'm giving my all. Like I'm already behind everyone else. These guys are all being scouted by USC. My co- my cousin went to uh, Jared Bell. He went to Colorado. Um, he, then he went to the NFL to play for the 49ers. He ended up taking an injury. Uh, my cousin, Scotty, he went to Utah, ended up being called the Batman. Like he's literally called the Batman in Utah. And uh, I had a homie, uh, a other homie, he went to New Mexico. I mean, everybody went to colleges. And I was the only person who didn't go because I took these injuries. I, was, I started getting scouted, but then I took an injury and scouts was like, oh, well, you know. And, and once like, like that feeling, it's just like, it's a depressing feeling. So let's fast forward. I go through all that, it's just this depressing state. I come back to Pasadena because I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to let the same thing that happened to me happen to him. Mm-hmm. So even on our YouTube channel, you go all the way back. We have a video called The Coach, The Brother. And from that point on, I trained him in basketball. I literally, it's funny, but back then when YouTube was trying to get big, yeah, Magic Johnson had put his... um his training videos up on YouTube and you was able to see, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm talking about. So I went there, That's I watched e- watch every it. Magic Johnson video and I just started studying and watching and studying and watching. And I showed Jay like how to chest pass, how to overhead pass, how to no look pass, how to, how to dribble. And then I just started watching like dribble tutorials. And, and back then the dribble tutorials was are so nowhere basic. near how they were it's now. So basic. Yeah. So then we just started, me and him just started, I started working on the basics. He was in like the, the fifth or sixth grade. And I just started Six. sixth grade. So I just started I, boy. I just started working on him every single day, hard. Like we were just training hard. He was doing box. Like literally, if you go to YouTube, there's a video called The Coach's Brother. And I show I was showing people, even if you have nothing, we was using the, the, uh, the elementary school that he was going to. We live right next to it. So we would hop the fence and I would literally train him on bleachers with trash cans. We would find trash around and use them as cones. Mm-hmm. And we worked hard. And if you go look at his mixtape, Jay has a mixtape on YouTube. You could just see like, this is what it looks like when you have nothing, but you want it. And even if, even if you don't go to a D1 college or whatever the case may be, you still have the talent mm-hmm. and the potential to go there. So I trained him every single day and I had to train myself. I didn't become a great basketball player until I got out of high school. And at that time, it's too late. Like you, as I was like, go to Juco. I'm like, no, because if I go to Juco, then who's going to train him? Mm-hmm. So like, I literally just sacrificed all, everything that I was like, yo, I'm an amazing player now. But I was like, I'm not about to leave him in the dust. I'm not going to put, put somebody else in charge of him because they're going to, like some of these coaches be just tarnishing what you work on. Of course. You know, like, and I was like, no. So then I just, I just stayed with him the whole time. It just helped him grow. And and then pretty much from there, freshman year, um, just, you know, off tryouts alone, people like the coach had already seen like my skill and that I was much better than everybody else. So from there, uh, I definitely passed in like the first day I was like the coach had pulled me to the side the first day of trials. and was like, I'm not gonna lie to you from what I've seen. You're all you've already made the team, but I still need you to show up to make it seem like, you know, so 
um, freshman year, amazing year. Uh, Trey is, we're training every single day. He's there at the games. So much so to the point where the coach actually asked Trey to come along with him, with us and actually coach us alongside of him. So Trey would get off work, come home, I was a get dressed and stuff. Domino's pizza delivery driver. Come home, come, go You're straight to the game. With a whole clipboard and everything, and for free. And I wasn't. I wasn't getting paid nothing. at all. Yep. I wasn't getting at paid all. Nothing. And Trey was going on the buses with us and everything. So freshman season, we we definitely were above five hundred, but I'm not going to say we were exceptional because uh, whew, you know what I mean. <laughs> but fast forward to sophomore year. Sophomore year, I come back even better. Um, but then I fractured my heel. So because our coach at the time. He coached at a collegiate level. So he tried to apply that same collegiate work ethic and like routine to us. You guys, yeah. And and with that, you know, you have to also do that in moderation. So we were doing like two hours of conditioning every day on top of all of that ball work, skill drills, like stuff like that. So mm-hmm. over time, when you're doing that five times out of the week, you're going your body and you're not also resting as well. Like he wasn't giving us like like light days or like rest days, like we were going hard every single day. So over time, my heel started to become weak. And there was one day I was running and I was like, my heel is burning. Like I've never felt that before. Like my heel was like, it was like an irritated feeling. So then I was like, okay. So then I I step off and I'm just like walking around and I think I'm fine. I get back on the floor, I can't run. Like I legit can't run anymore. My foot is hurting too bad. So I told the coach what's going on. I take my shoe off. My whole heel is swollen. And the coach is like, what's wrong with you? I was like, I don't know. Like, <laughs> can, a bucket, can, I, can I get a bucket of water or something? Like, can I get an ice pack? Like, <laughs> like what you mean? What's wrong with me? I don't know. Like, you push back? Like, <laughs> so, so I'm icing my heel. I get home. I tell my mom and dad what's going on. My dad takes me to the doctor the next day. The doctor, we go through the x-rays and stuff. A week or two later, doctor tells me I have an inch and a half fracture in my heel. And he shows me the x-ray and it's a whole like actual crack in my heel. So we're like, okay, so doc, what do we do? He's like, well, I mean, you have two options. You can either get really intense physical therapy, but by the time you'll come back, it'll probably be around maybe like January or February, <laughs> or you could just sit out the whole season and just recover. I remember this. Okay. Well, January, February, the season is practically over. Like, right. yeah. Like we, like you getting ready for playoffs, like for uh, around that time. So I just, I talked to my dad. I talked to, I talked to my mom. I talked to Trey, yeah. talked to my family. It was just like, we think it would just be best if you just sit out this year. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I took it personal too. With me sitting out, I was the best player on our, on my team for, for soft, for my sophomore team. And the coach had, you know, you know, like coaches favoritism. Like I could feel that favoritism <laughs> for me. And once I told him, like, I was going to be out for the whole season, all of that just vanished. Like, he he went from treating me like Leave a top player you. to treating me like a bench warmer. Yeah. I like, like I would be at practice, like, uh, just standing there, like, helping everybody, have, uh, helping everybody else, like, doing, like, shooting drills and stuff. And, like, the way he was, like, talking to me was, like, I was, like, a wrench or something. Like, like, he was trying to, like, make me do, like, bench player stuff. And I'm, like, no. Like, I don't know who you think you are, but, like, that's not happening around here. So I took that personal. I sophomore season it. happens. I took that personal. Wait, hold up. Before you even skip past that, I took that personal. Nah, he actually did that. No, Nav. Like I'm serious. He really did. So like he really did. I'm not gonna put his name out there, but yeah, I but I I took it personal because because number one, his son couldn't hold me. So I used to go to their practices. Now his son, his, his, I said what I said. I said what I said. <laughs> I said what I said. I said what I said. If you hear me right now, <laughs> you still can't hold me. Forget you talk about. Yeah. Um, his son couldn't hold me, and I used to go to their practices, and I would help them train. And the coach kept asking me to be the assistant coach. Every every school that Jay has ever been at, from elementary, I had been the assistant coach every step of the way. Mm-hmm. And even when he was in varsity, I was asked to be coach and I said no because I'm like look I can't I can't coach varsity because I need Justin to find his own way because when he gets yeah. to college I won't be there mm-hmm. I'm not gonna be there to just work my way up to oh 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 you and LB oh what's up you need you know, like they nah. already got people on payroll for that so I was like when in Jay's sophomore in Jay's senior year he has to do this on his own it's something he has to learn how to do on his own but before that 
when I saw him go from being the favorite, team, the best player on the team, obviously dropping 25-30, and you drop a 25-30, that, that's different. In high school, that's different. You and I both know. It's a lot. Scores be like 30 to 45. Sometimes it, the score don't even go over. 65 to like 43. Yeah, like, like it be low scoring. Yeah. yeah. So, so for me, I took it personal. So I used to, I would go to the practices and I would literally just drop off his son just because. Just because. I would just go to the practices, still help them train. Every day, now. Jay would be, I would be there every, every day. Nav, listen every to day, me. Nav. I was there every single <laughs> every day. day. Even on his off days, he was there. Like I, I would get I, off I, on his off days. I would get off from Domino's. Yeah. Come and show up in my Domino's outfit. Sometimes I'll leave my sign on, but I'll take it off <laughs> and then put it in my back seat. I would take my clothes off, put my clothes on, drop his, drop all of them off, and be like, this run in the family. Like, you're not finna treat my, my little brother like he's some type of scrub. And afterwards, I was like, look, I'm finna make, I'm, we finna, I'm finna rehab your body better than what you, you will never take another injury like that again, from your foot to your ankle to your neck. I don't care what it is. You will never take another injury. I had him, we had this bucket and I used to put his whole, we just put, just dump a whole bunch of, I would get off work, buy yeah. ice every single day, mm-hmm. dump the ice in there, put uh, bath salts in there dump his foot in the ice and be like, we're going to do, we're going to do 15. We're going to start off with 15 minutes and then we're going to work our way up gradually. We're going to do toe raises. We're going to do every, we're going to do every, I'm a massage his foot. So I'm sitting there after, before we do it, I'm massaging his foot, massage his, what's his name? Dump his foot inside. Let you know it sit the, in there for a little bit. You know those little foot tubs that, yeah. that, that, that vibrate and yeah, like yeah. That, that, yeah, we had one of those two every literally day. every single day for just like doing like two days, three days Man. of just straight rehabbing. We was going to we was going to uh in in, in Pasadena we have uh you know you have had the, the Rose Bowl mm-hmm. and we would yep. go to where the hill is. I would have him doing some light work. Like we we took these uh Dr. Shows and I put Dr. Shows inside of his shoes. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, listen, we're gonna run up the hill. But I don't want you to run on your heel. I want you to run just balls on your foot the whole time. You get on your heels, you're gonna do push-ups. He was like, All right, we run up the hill. Me him, I'm with him running up and down the hill the whole time, mm-hmm. just doing it. When I tell you his, that was the strongest I have ever seen him, ever. He was literally able to, he was, he could have came back, but I was like, no, I don't want you to come back. I want them to have a terrible season. I want them to be garbage. Because without you. only in a month, it was like a month, a yep. month and a half. We went, I had went back to the doctor for an update. And he was like, your heel is completely healed. Completely healed. Like there's no type yeah. of, like it, it doesn't even look like the crack was there. And he was like, I mean, I can give you a note to, you know, allow you to come back mm-hmm. because when I came, when I got that update, it was still early in the season, but I was like, no, because mm-hmm. after what I saw, like how he treated me after, I was like, no, and we all, me, him, my dad, we all agreed, no, we're going to, we're going to watch this season crumble because what goes around comes around. So you're not going to just do dirt and think dirt is not going to come back to you. He got fired. He got fired. He really? got caught up in, he, he got, got he got caught up in some, in some other stuff that I yep. ain't gonna speak on, but long story short, that was his first and his last season there. Yep. That was his yeah. first and his last season there. So fast forward to junior year, I come back. I have the option to play varsity, but I'm like, mm, as a junior being on varsity, it's it's especially with who was there at the time. It was Ajon Epperson, if you know who that is. He was pretty much the top guy on varsity. Okay. So it was okay. like he was it, top guy in the city. He, I, yeah, actually, he was, he was actually, ranked. He was ranked. Yeah, so he was ranked. So with that, it was city. like, you know, if you're a junior on varsity, especially with somebody like that of that caliber, you're not really going to get that much playing time unless they're up by a lot. So talk to my family and we all decided, okay, we're just going to play JV, but mm-hmm. we're going to dominate on JV because first, first. the way high school ball works, JV plays first and varsity is watching. So that means that the varsity coaches – Everybody is going to be watching the JV game because they're always going to be scouting, mm-hmm. looking to see who they want to bring up, stuff like that. Oh, they was begging. So, come on, can we, can we please? Like I used to, the coach, like I'll be sitting on the sideline. And I first be, game, Nav, I had 30. I just want to say, game, first game, game, I had 30. 30. First game of the season, you were, I had 30. You were a killer in high school, basically. So, what would yes. you average, what'd you average uh, in that year, the year you came back? Like, how'd you average, guys do? I averaged 25 points. So, you killed it that year? Yeah. Like, you, I was how, averaging how like a do? double double. Hmm? How'd the team do overall? The team, the team overall did 
all right, but you know, you you have those type of players that are impact players that make other people better. Yeah. When I wasn't on the floor, you saw that that the vibe and the energy was off. Of course. So pretty so, much like I practically played all game. Okay. Yeah. So so for so you killed it out down that. Then next year you played varsity. Mm-hmm. And then how 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 the varsity year go? Varsity year was at, was starting off great. Summer ball like because I was under Ajon, the okay, coach yeah, pretty much. There. Right. And then once once Ajon left, he went off to college. The coach pretty much looked at me and was like, OK, you're going to be the top player. And we had multiple conversations, so on and so forth. Everything seems like it's all fine over summer ball. And then I twist my ankle two weeks before our first season game. Right. And it was a it was a high level ankle sprain. Like it was bad. So I'm out for two weeks doing rehab again. Just every single day, we're just rehabbing, just rehabbing, just rehabbing. Yep. I get back to practice a week, no, three days before our first game. I'm back on the floor. I'm moving. Everything's fine. Like, the coach, he still seems like everything is good because I came back really quick. The first game of the season, I don't touch the floor at the floor. all. Matt, I didn't play a single minute. The only time I touched the ball was in warm-ups. That's the only <laughs> time I shot the ball. So, the next day, I, I talked to the coach. I'm like, coach, like, why am I not playing? Why didn't, why didn't I play game? at all yesterday? Like, like I like I was back. I was back at practice. I wasn't sick. I wasn't like. And y'all and barely won that game, and they. Ba- I think they barely won. It was that against Lockin' Yada. It was against Lockin' Yada. It was against Lockin' Yada. Bar- barely won. Barely against Lockin' Yada. Uh, so you, you're, not supposed, you you're not supposed, huh? So the coach was like, "Oh well, you know, because you uh, only practiced for a couple of days, you know, I felt I felt that you weren't really comfortable with the offense, and you know, I just felt that it was best that we just sit you down so that you can actually see." Like this so, offense ain't changed in thirty years. Nav, they <laughs> it's ran, the same Nav, offense. <laughs> you know how high school ball not, works. They run the same plays. Runs. Yeah, high school ball is basic, but that's just how coaches be, especially that level. Like, oh, so, okay. We, so, so let's. So from there, so what mm-hmm. happened from there? Like, then he started playing you. After so, that, yeah. From there, everything's perfectly fine. Okay, I'm, I'm in the rotation, and then him and this player. I'm not going to say his name. But him and this player have this sort of bond. Like father and son. Because they were always together, which I don't understand because right. he should have been in class, but he was never in class. And he was always with him. But that's another story for another day. <laughs> so, and also the coach knew his parents. And you know how that goes. And the coach knew my our parents. But the difference was he didn't like my dad. That, yeah. Because my dad would have beat his ass. You know, Excuse me. Hold on. Know, quick. Give me a second. You know, give me a second. Hold on. You know. <laughs> so. Oh, that's bringing up bad memories, bro. <laughs> you know, with. The coach already having that bond built with that player, mm-hmm. then having the instability with with my dad, mm-hmm. it started to cause friction between me and the coach, which I don't understand. But it pretty much summed up to I never started at all. And oh, I was coming season. off the bench my senior year, averaging 25 a game, averaging 25 a game. And I literally was talking to him every single game. Coach, when are you going to start me? Coach, when are you going to start me? Coach, you clearly see the starting point guard is not like my man. St- my man started off one game with five turnovers. The first quarter, Nav. The coaches, coaches always have favoritism, especially he in was high a, school and stuff. Nav, Nav, five <laughs> turnovers in the first thirty seconds of the yeah, game. He was a Nav, junior. Man. He that was a been junior. A immediate coming. sub. I don't know why he didn't. <laughs> so, so senior senior year, get bench six man of the year, whatever. Mm-hmm. Then so what happens? So the senior year ends. Mm-hmm. What was there college after that? JUCO. Yes. Okay. There was there was a there were a nice handful of of college that were scouting me at the time. About six. Okay. Yeah, about six. about six. Some of them were D twos. Some of them were D threes. Uh, others were JUCOs. And we had originally picked a D two, okay. but when they went through check my SAT scores stuff like that, you know, public school. Yeah. Kids don't really, you know, aren't really brought up to speed or informed on that. So I had low SAT scores. So they pretty much were like, you know what? Mm-hmm. We're just going to go with somebody else. Mm-hmm. So the only college I had left was a JUCO, which is where we live currently. At the time, you know, with, again, dealing with our mom being sick, you know, our my dad just really wanted us to get out the house and really wanted us okay. to just leave and grow up. So around that time, our grandfather passed away. And then three months later, our mom, our mom passed away. 
So with all of that going on, we weren't able to get out there for Hell Week, for you know all that other stuff. Yep. So pretty much we were we were coming in right when real practices started. Yep. So we get out there and wait, you skipped something. Mm-hmm. So the reason why they chose that JUCO is because that the the college was looking for players still. So oh, I was yeah, already I was already uh, I was already like mm, twenty. 24 four. so jay was like yo i want you to play with me okay and i'm like you want me to play with you like what you mean play with you he's like i want you to c- come out and play with me mm-hmm. so i'm like all right so i did the tryouts he, they came out to long beach we have we had drove all the way to long beach that's about like an hour or something about hour 30 mm-hmm. uh we go to long beach have a great showing out the coach is like yo y'all two brothers are about to be amazing we're about to have a great year and I pretty much was gonna be like the lead, the veteran, the leader on the team, because it's like, look, I'm not, I'm not about to be around y'all kids to sit here and 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 act like I'm a kid. Like, no, if we're here to win something, let's win something. I've never gotten an opportunity to win something, so I'm not here to be like go to parties. I don't care about none of that stuff. I want to win something. I'm sick and tired of you. Get tired of that, that again, that word potential, not reaching it. So like, I I was coming in there with a different attitude, like with a winner's mentality. When we, but because of the deaths, we fly, we drive out there, try to get out there, trying to tell the coach, like, and as we're driving, my dad gets his text, we stop at this gas station, and he's like, Well, since your son, your oldest son, couldn't make Hell Week and somebody else is a walk on, they get the scholarship instead of him. And now we don't have any more positions open left. So Jay was the only person that had a full scholarship. Mm-hmm. So now for me, like, that was just a, that was just like, I got punched like right in the stomach. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, Dang. I'm driving 2,000 miles to not even be able to play. Now, Matt, back to what I said before, I didn't already gone through, I didn't went through this in high school already. I didn't went right. through this. So now as I'm driving up and I get the text message, my, I'm already in a bad mental space. Now I just like, you know what? This is not about me. This is about him. So I need to allow him to go out and just do what he's able to do. I'll figure this out myself. So now I'm going out there with my wife. I'm married. I'm 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 24. I, I'm newly just newly married. Me and my wife were just like we're sitting back talking, and I just just really didn't know what to do in my life after that. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna just go back to Domino's. I'm gonna just work here for a little bit and just try to figure things out. Jay starts playing, and just just things just just start going downhill. Jay plays a couple of games, does fantastic, ends up taking a knee injury. I mean, a hip, a knee, and a hip injury. First things first, I, I aggravated my meniscus my first day at practice. Yeah. Because my first day at practice, I had called and asked one of the teammates to pick me up, and the coach told the teammate not to pick me up. Yep. So I get there at practice 30 minutes late, and one, one of them had to come from work to pick me up and take me to practice. I think I, I, think I did. I think I was going to pick I picked you up and take you to practice. So I get there. Talk to the coach. I'm like, hey, coach. He's like, oh, hey, you finally made it. Glad to see you, so on and so forth. I think everything's fine. He's like, you know, you're 30 minutes late. I'm like, I get it. I'm pretty sure there's some sort of consequence, like suicides. And I said that jokingly, and he was like, yeah, 30 of them. So I looked at him, like, puzzled. Like, it's my first day at practice. Like, 30 suicides? Put it on you like that, yeah. So... He tells me you have 30 su- you gotta you gotta run 30 suicides, and if you don't make it within 15 seconds, you gotta run it again. So I'm on the sideline running the whole practice. So not only did he have me doing the suicides that I had to do for being late, I also had to do their conditioning as well. So I do like 10 or like 12 suicides, then I do his conditioning, then I go back to running suicides, and as I'm running, my last maybe two. I aggravated my meniscus instantly. And as I'm running, I felt something like pull. And as soon as I felt that pull, like I started limping immediately. I told the coach, coach, something is wrong with my knee. I can't run. Like so- something is wrong. He's like, well, you got two options. Either you can run this last suicide or you got to start over tomorrow. Jeez, bro. Nav. That's, I don't understand coach's mentality when it comes down to things like that. You know, it's like, bro, really? Like, I get that, you know, we've had our heroic moments where people have played with, like, broken fingers, okay. like, you know, like, st- okay, well, fam, this, is this, like, if I'm being serious and you see visually I can't run, I'm limping, what? So 
I go to the doctor. Doctor tells me I aggravated my meniscus. I got to sit out until like maybe like a week and a half, two weeks, get a doctor's note, come back to practice. I'm practicing perfectly fine. The coach is being all nice to me. It's kind of like high school again. Coach is being all nice to me and so on and so forth. Then I get sick because one of the players practicing doesn't tell anybody that he's sick. Doesn't tell anybody. So I get sick. Coach tells me, once I tell him I'm sick, you can't step foot into the gym until you're better. Okay? So I sit out for another week. I come back from my sickness. I'm back at practice. Yeah. I'm playing just like I never left. A red shirt took his jersey off. Why? I don't know. I still don't know to this day. He took his jersey off. He put his jersey on the sideline. Where we were doing the drill, the jersey is right there. So we were doing two on two, one per, uh, two people on the low block, two people on the elbow. Yep. Person on the low block starts with the ball, kicks it out. You shoot, ball is live. To get off the floor for the defenders, you have to secure a rebound. So shot goes up. I go get the, I'm chasing after the ball. I see the ball and I saw the jersey out the corner of my eye. As I'm going to get the ball, I grab and secure the ball. But as soon as I secure the ball, I step on the jersey and my foot, my right foot slides forward. And pretty much I hyperextended my knee. I, I twisted my right side of my hip and I twisted my ankle all at once. So when I fell. He didn't have a whole right leg. Like, 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 like when I fell, <laughs> I, I, I heard everybody, you know, you, Nav, you know, you fell in the gym where everybody go, ooh. Oh, yeah. Everyone I fell over. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, listen, like my whole career is over. Like my leg, like I know we're going to have to put my whole leg. I heard it. I, I was putting a piece in the oven and like, I heard a boom. I was like. Ooh. Like, I know my whole <laughs> right leg gonna have to go in the freezer, okay? One of the pepperonis hit the floor, I picked it back up. <laughs> oh, you're disgusting. Nah, bro, you're sick. Nah, you're sick. I'm playing, I'm playing, I'm playing. Nah, you're sick. I'm like, playing. You're sick. Basically, basically what, I'm, what I'm understanding from all this is basketball was just never meant for you guys. No, it, it, no. It taught no. you a lot. The stories that you both just told were, like, basically stories of perseverance and just getting through a lot of BS. But what I really like about it is the passion behind both of you guys and the passion from the big brother really just trying to like put the little brother on the right path to success, which you, I don't think you actually see a lot. So I just wanted to like commend you guys on that. I appreciate that. Thank you. I and I actually that. want to just kind of build off this. And we just talked about perseverance, motivation, growth, all this kind of stuff you guys just mentioned. Mm -hmm. And we're going to put basketball to the side for a second. Okay. So for 20, for 20, this is a question I asked all my guests. So for 2021, right. Let's use one word to describe describe it for you guys. Like, how do you want twenty twenty one to go for yourselves? With one legendary. word, legendary. So now, so legendary is the word. Mm -hmm. So now, give just give just a little context into why that's the word and how you can, how that can actually come to fruition by the end of the year. The word is legendary because Trey and Jay are on the are on the path in the direction of being remembered and you know leaving a mark on not only Twitch but YouTube, any platform that we touch anything, whether it's this podcast, whether it's an ad, it's a commercial. Anytime you see Trey and Jay, you're going to automatically think, I already know. If I see Trey and Jay, I already know what I'm going to get. I already know what I'm going to get. Entertainment, laughter, mm -hmm. comedy, you know, words of advice, encouragement, awesome. gyms, you know, we, we are, we thrive on trying to be the full package to where you don't have to watch anybody else. You can, anything you need is right here in front of you, yep. right here in front of you to where we, we want to do everything where we don't want to just grow and just build and have a mark on twitch like no we want to do everything to where we even have our own action figures you know we have our own g fuel like flavors it. like okay. like stuff like mm -hmm. that to where if you if you see anything related to trey j you already know it's going to be exceptional and it's going to be good because we don't promote anything or talk about anything that's not good at all it's just I a start it, i love the way you guys think man um i'm actually really excited to dive into like so basically for the podcast First of all, I already knew you guys were going to give a thorough breakdown. So I appreciate mm -hmm. the introduction and the fact that we got to talk so much about basketball because there's a lot of hoopers that listen to the podcast, yeah. mm -hmm. which you guys understand. So like for them to see that you guys did that and struggled, a lot of people are going to relate to that, which is great. Mm -hmm. And now we can hopefully kind of turn that all that all those negatives into like ma major positives when we talk about the gaming side. So we're going to go through three three different sections in the podcast, like the heart, the meat and potatoes of the podcast. Mm -hmm. We got learning, growth, and championship. Yes, sir. So the first one is the learning. We're going to learn 
learn about you guys, but we're also just going to go through all the like ups and downs you kind of have gone through mm-hmm. from the end of basketball, the end of dominoes, and to now. So the, the, the question I want to ask you first is, at what point did you guys realize, okay, look, basketball is basically done. I'm tired of working at Domino's or whatever other mm-hmm. jobs you guys were doing. And, you know, let's, let's go, let's go in on gaming. Let's try it out. Like what year did that happen? And why I'll did let, you wait, take wait, it? Wait, hold, I'll let you take hold it. Hold on, hold on. Give me a second. You better not be smacking those. Lips. You better not. Don't pop them. Hold. Don't pop them. Better not. You better not. I'll, I'll end this broadcast right now. Don't pop them. You better not. Pop them. I'm going to pop you. you I'm going to pop you. <laughs> Pop them and I'm going to pop you. Hey, you know what sucks? For the people that's listening to this mm-hmm. audio, y'all don't know what's going on. Yeah. If you guys listen to the audio on Spotify, just go straight to YouTube. Just don't even listen to this podcast. Nav, Spotify. Nav, you Nav, Nav, get wait, wait, Nav, you, know you know what's funny now? Bro. You know what's funny? I want, people to be, I want people to be like, bro, what is happening? <laughs> <laughs> I need to see what's happening. Like, <laughs> you know, um, so so <clears throat> the day the day I, so I was, I was at work. I was at Domino's. Okay. And me and my wife, we were both assistant managers. And I went from a delivery driver to a, a manager finally, and nothing changed. Just nothing changed. So I go in and it's just, I'm like, you know what? I tell my wife every single time, I'm like, babe, I can't work here no more. Like, this ain't me. Like, I, I come in here every day, I'm angry, I'm frustrated. And this is the place where I found out that my mom died. Like, I, I can't come in here anymore. Um, the day after my mom died, the day before Thanksgiving. And I've never cried that much in my life. And I still had to make orders while I'm sitting over here crying. And my tears then fell into the pizza sauce. I'm over here serving people my DNA. Like, it, it's just, it's just like, I just, I like, I literally kept coming into work and like people coming over to me like, you know, Trey, you okay? Like, drop, like, don't ask me, am I okay? Like, don't rub my shoulders, don't touch me. Like, just so my boss, she was just, she was just, just evil. She was one of those. Just, oh, I am, I am, I am, I am, I am. I ain't gonna say, but she was evil. She didn't care about how you felt. She didn't care about that. They, you know, and out 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 here, sometimes you know they don't always address you the way that you're supposed to be addressed, being a minority. So they all here calling me colored and stuff. I'm like, nah, nah, we're not doing that. Like, we're not doing that. No. So um, there was this day I told my wife had, she was going for a job interview and she, was, she had did a job interview, got the job. I said, beautiful. She was like, okay, I can't work this day because I got to start my job here. I said, I'll take your shift. Don't worry about it. So I had worked the double shift. I worked the nighttime shift. And then I told, and then I was like, I'll work the morning shift for you. So don't worry. My manager, she, my wife goes in, she was like, hey, look, I can't, my, I can't work this shift. Um, so my husband, he said he'll take the shift for me. So she's like, no, um, he's not gonna work the shift. You have to work the shift. That, you see that thing? So, <laughs> so my wife goes, my wife goes, no, I can't work the shift. My husband will come in. She's like, no, I don't want him working that shift because I don't want to work with him. She already knew I stopped liking her. So I'm like, I don't like her. She don't like me. That's fine. So now she's like, okay, well, if that's the case, none of us is coming in. So she was like, well, no, one, you're going to come in. So then I hear her say that. I tell her, I, I walk in the room. Now I was making, I was cutting up a pizza. I put it down. I walked in the room. I was like, this going to go one, this going to go one or two ways. Either I'm going to come in and work this shift tomorrow. Or ain't none of us coming in ever, period. She was like, well, you know, well, 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 you're not working with me. So I was like, well, guess what? I took that, I took that thing, I threw it on the floor, I took my shirt off, I threw it, I was like, nah, I can't say what I said, but I said something. Just know it, it, it <laughs> I, I just said something. I said something know, in PG, bro. Just, just know, in PG. What I said was very nourishing. It was a lot of bleep buttons. Just it, know. It was a lot of bleep It was buttons. a whole bunch of bleep meat. Yeah, it was a lot so of bleep. So I, I said what I said. I walked out. I got in the car, turned the engine on. I was waiting for my wife to come out. I was like, man, make sure I scream it. And make sure you get my check. <laughs> Last day. Last day. <laughs> After that, um, I just uh, I just told I, I told myself, like, listen. I'm never, I'm not working for nobody again like that. Never. So then my wife was like, you know what? Okay, I'm gonna get you a job. 
so my wife she was looking at the newspaper i started streaming so i started playing i i got back into one second before you know any other things i was real heavy into okay, yeah, fgc yeah, yeah, yeah. you know what i mean go ahead, show, bro. i was show. real heavy into fgc so, so i was playing mortal kombat x i was playing um on tekken and i had started streaming and i was I, I started getting like 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 great at it and i was like but this is not making me no money this is when twitch it was hard to get partnered on twitch right and i'm like okay <clears throat> i need a job but I want to take this serious because I, I have a calling for this. Like, I feel like I have a calling for this. Now, back, pat, backtrack real quick. All we did was spend our time in the house a lot. Mm -hmm. So all we did was play all types of video games. I didn't just play GTA or True Crimes or Def Jam. No, I was playing everything. Everything that came out, we was playing. Games like Nightmare Creatures. A lot of people don't even know what Nightmare they don't Creatures know what that is. is. They're too young for that. I don't know what that They're is. too young for that. Playing like beat, playing Metal Gear Solid and then uh, 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 playing Tomb Raider, playing uh, uh, just nice it, Crash, mm -hmm. any game you could think of that, that you can't think of, we was playing because that's all we did was stay in the house all day. So at that point, I'm like, you know what? I feel like this is what I'm supposed to do. Like, this is what I'm supposed to do. I didn't been through this hard life and this life where they tell you if you're black or if you're African-American, you got to play sports. But some of us, a lot of us are not gonna make it. We're not gonna make it. I'm just keeping it real with you. A lot of a lot of people not gonna make it. You need something else to do. You yeah. need a different calling. But if you if you tell your child to put all the eggs into one basket, then guess yeah. what? That's the wrong. They, 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 they gonna grow up not knowing what to do with their life afterwards. So for me, I started. My wife got me a job while I was still streaming. She got me a job. I was a dishwasher. At a and hospital. I was at a hospital. <clears throat> and. I was back there washing dishes for like two days. And they was, they, the, the manager came up. He was like, you know what? I can't have you back here washing dishes. You too funny. You, you, got this, you got this glow about you. I can't have you back here. I was like, cool. Because, man, I got prune hands. My <laughs> hands are all moisty. I'm ashy all the time. Look at this. Yeah. So I go from the back. They make me a cashier. I'm in the front. Everybody loves me. They like my energy. I'm like the happiest person there because I'm always making people laugh. I start meeting like the people are like, yo. So literally people in the front was like, yo, why is he working as a cashier? Like he's like, you put this person like this type of person. So some people's asking me to do other things. I'm like, no, I don't want to do that. Like, I'm, no, I'm okay. I don't want to be no nurse. I'm, I'm cool. Because like, I can't, I, I'm not that type of person that can watch people be sick and then they die. Like, yeah, I, 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 I know. Yeah. No, I can't yeah. do that. So I was like, no, I'm cool. I'll just stay where I'm at. So then it was like, you know what? We're going to give you a better job. We're going to make you a nighttime chef. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, well, well, what does this job entail? It was like, okay, well, you're going to make this much money. You're going to get these benefits. You get all this. I said, wait, for, for me? <laughs> so I, I could do this. So I did it for about roughly a year. And the more I did it, I started to find this um, comfort and I started to like feel like myself again because still dealing with my mom's death in the back of my head, my mother loved cooking. And that was like the main thing that she just did. She just loved to cook mm -hmm. because when all you do is spend your time in the house, you got to find something to keep you alive, to keep you working. So my mom would go in there and just make stuff that she had never made before. And I used to spend every Thanksgiving, every Christmas, we would be up the day before Christmas Eve, Thanksgiving Eve, and we'd be up from 10 o'clock all the way to like five, six in the morning, making yams, dressing, ham, mm -hmm. pot roast, greens, macaroni and cheese, and all this other stuff. And I would just see this joy in her face. And I never understood why she liked cooking so much until I was in the kitchen myself. And it was multiple days I would be standing there and I would just start crying, like, and just feel like she was just like right there with me. Watching you, yeah. Mm -hmm. After about a year of it, I was like, I think I came and did what I was supposed to do. I got that, that closure that I needed. So we started doing 2K and we started with 2K17. Mm -hmm. And 2K17, we started meeting fan phenomenal people like uh, Man Man Grindhard and Tequila and Poor Boy Sin. Annoying, Poor Boy Sin, <clears throat> Cole the Man. These are all huge names in the call in the 2K community. Mm -hmm. And all of these guys started gravitating to us. And I was like, yo, I really think that we can do something huge here that never has been that has never been done before. Mm -hmm. So then I I quit. I told I told my wife, I was like, listen. 
if you give me a year to work on this channel, I promise you, I will make more money than what I've ever made working at this place. She was like, I'll give you a year. So I quit the job. I got Jay a job at the hospital. Mm -hmm. So we literally swapped places. So he was working with me, me and him were working together. We were a duo there because he was a dietary clerk. Mm -hmm. I was a nighttime chef. So he will make the food and I will take the food up to the patients. So Jay and I, we had that, to- That easy. Like literally we had to know, we had to know certain things because you could kill a patient because they ask, they're, they're, um, they need something pureed, but they asking for a cheeseburger. We would be like, you can't ask, like there'd be nurses up there that don't know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And the per Jay's reading the, the, the sheet and Jay's like, this person can't swallow. They can't swallow like, whole foods. Now, now, they were trying just, to work some, yeah, okay. Like you can't, okay, so just a quick little, you know, information. Puree means you gotta actually grind it up and make it mush. Yeah, so, like baby, like, like, like food, right? Yeah. So, so yeah. Nev, a cheeseburger with the bun? A person you, that yo, can't. You just trying to finesse the nurse. Yo, no, you're real. disgusting, a man. A person that like, can't nah, swallow. You're sick. They you're can't sick. swallow. Wow. So you gotta rip the burger in half, then rip it in small pieces, then uh, add water. Then no, yeah. I'm not eating that. They add a little gravy to it, mm -hmm. give it a little flavor, mm -hmm. like. And uh, the gravy ain't even had no seasoning. So, never mind. Never mind. So Jay and I, we had to learn a lot of stuff because we had to really take care of people, and mm -hmm. we were responsible. If somebody died and I made something I wasn't supposed to make, I'm responsible. And I feel guilty, like, wait, I just killed somebody? So we never let that happen. Mm. Like Jay and I literally made sure, and, and like special people like that had babies, we made sure like if they, if they didn't know who the baby daddy was, we would be, we thought like Jay be like, the, the baby daddy's not there or the nurse, the girl would tell Jay like, you know, like Jay be like, congratulations. And the person be like, thank you, I'm doing it on my own. And I would, me and Jay would just throw in extra stuff. Like, all right, let's give her an extra pudding cup. Let's throw in some extra shrimp, throw in another steak. Like we would do stuff like that for people just so that they felt that, 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 that care. You know what I mean? Like that same care yeah, that I a love. mother would give, you Absolutely. know? So I quit. Jay kept working there for another year. And when I tell you, I put everything I had, I didn't want to fail anybody. I put everything I had into that year. So 2K18 comes. And we both hit 99. We were the first two brothers ever to hit 99 at the same time in one game. And when I tell you I was pumping out video after video after video after thumbnail after stream after stream, it was just literally working like 15 to 16, day, 17 man. hours a day. Mm -hmm. And doing two days too. Two days, yeah. Doing two days. on YouTube and streaming I was, on Twitch at night. Fat, yeah, I, was stream, I would literally stream on YouTube, get off, do like a five hour stream on YouTube, Get off, grind in my career to edit to, to get to 99, then edit a video, then wait for Jay to get off at like seven or eight, do another stream late at night, then at night from so from seven at night to eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, one. So we would stream to like one o'clock in the morning. Get off, go back to my career, grind from one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven o'clock in the morning, sleep for about two, two to three hours. Get back up at 11 or 12, stream on YouTube. So I was only sleeping like three, four hours a day. And me personally, I was only getting like two or three hours of sleep because I knew like what what was on the table. So I had to be at work at like 10 or like 1030. But I wasn't going to bed till like five or six. And there were some days where I was only getting like two hours of sleep and literally falling asleep on my lunch break. But like falling asleep like on the job, not Different during the shift, but, yeah. Yeah. but okay. it was just like we wanted it that bad. Yeah. No, and that, that's what makes you that's why we're having this podcast right now right so mm -hmm. 2k18 was was this the one that everything paid off like this was the year you guys kind of blew up no okay. 2k19 was when yeah. we took 19. off okay so 18 like, you made tremendous progress you grew the channel yes. it was a start it was a start that was start. that was the start that mm -hmm. was like the Perfect. the that was like the yo who are these guys mm -hmm. and everybody just thought that we just blew up overnight now i can't speak on other people i have watched people troll their way to blowing up, troll their way into getting. I earned every bit of roses I got here. Like people don't, you don't know how many days I woke up, eyes bloodshot red, and I'm telling myself, wake up, wake up, get up. No, we're not going to sleep, go get a pot of coffee. I'm going to bed, I got the jitters, I can't sleep. I'm trying to shake off the caffeine in my body. Like, like people don't know the stress it causes. Like it, for my own marriage, like we, we, I was arguing with my wife because she's like, Honey, we're not spending time together. We're not. I'm like, and you get to this point where you're like, yo, 
Like, what do you want from me? Like, I'm trying to make a life better than this. I'm tired of struggling. I'm tired of waking up every single day. I'm I, I feeling like I'm just going through the motions. I'm tired of going check the check. Like, okay, if I miss a check, then then what? Like, what? Like now, people are gonna look at me like I'm this useless husband who's shooting this pipe dream. That's not like no. You're not about to tell me or anybody about to tell me that I need to go get a real job because you don't know my life. You don't know what I've been through to be here at this spot right now. Like I've been, like I, like what your life is, your mother's perfectly fine. Your mother's alive. Your dad is alive. Your grandmother's alive. I'm missing people. So I've been trained to do this since a young kid, since a young kid to not be able to sleep and be able to check on somebody or kid. Like I've been, I've been through this. So I'm here. I'm going to make it. I promise you, no matter if you believe in me or not, it became a blessing in 19. 19 comes out. 17, 18's out, and I had gained a lot of weight. I got really fat because I was working at the hospital. I ain't gonna hold you, I was eating good. Okay? You was living that life? Burgers, cheeseburgers, I wasn't paying for a dang thing. You understand me? I was making everything for free and for me. Okay? The fries? So, but I ended up, man, I ended up, man, so much. mm. So there was like, I was on stream at 18, Nav, and I mean, on 18, I was on stream, and uh, there was this one day, um, this dude got on stream. He misunderstood something that I said because somebody clipped it, but manipulated the clip mm-hmm. and sent it to him, and he took it personal because he was a stage player. Okay. So stage players are, imagine a stage player being somebody, you know, like when you go to the gym at night, there's just a different caliber of players at night than where they are in the daytime. The dudes at night have a more cockier attitude than in the daytime. The dudes in the daytime, okay. they on their lunch break. They just want to have fun. But yeah. the dudes at night, they taking it personal. Mm-hmm. That's how they are. They take it personal when they when 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 you speak on them. So they act like they're a higher tier of two K players. But Jay and I only play park. We minded our business, play park, and just beat everybody. Anybody that they said was god tier players got smacked by us 21 0, 21 to three, 21 four. It was no. It, it was easy, and and I'm sorry. I don't I, like, like. Hey, if you're watching this, it's still easy. Period. So I'm like, hey, <laughs> talk, bro. It's hey. still easy, but it backfired because the dude goes on stream. He got like less than a hundred viewers. He puts up, hits the clip on stream, and then he just starts roasting me. I ain't gonna hold you. It was funny too. Like I ain't gonna lie. Some of his jokes was good. I ain't hold you. Like that was good. <laughs> He starts roasting me. And I mean, he started going in on me. Like, oh, oh, I know the McDonald's menu backwards, head out. Oh, I eat the napkins too, head out. I remember some of them. Some of them was good. I used them. I go, oh, I plagiarized. I used some of them. He told you you eat the napkins? He, he said I ate the ketchup package. Like, like Yo. all of it, bro. Like, like my wow. man's just, my man's wow. roasting me. And I saved it. I saved it. Like, I literally saved it. It's still on, it's, 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 in my, it's in my Google photos. I saved it. Because I told myself, nobody will ever use my own body against me ever again. I had ended up gaining like, I went from being 205 to 290. It's a huge jump. So I was out, I, I couldn't even jump. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> like I was a whole pork shoulder. I was like, dang bro, I'm, I'm seasoned and everything. <laughs> You got potatoes and carrots on me, like damn, like he looking magically plump, like out here, like I was thick, like I'm like damn. So I'm like, all right, you know what? I dieted harder than what I've ever dieted before. Mm-hmm. I worked out. I was doing two a days. I was getting up at like six in the morning. My wife would be at work. Jay would be at work. Six in the morning, I go outside. I was running, jogging, and I would run around the block. Come back in, take a break, hit the weights, get on, do my micro career grind, get off, work out again, drink protein. My wife will make something, I'm not eating that. She'd be like, you got to eat. No, I'm not eating that. I went from 290 to two, to 215 in like two months. You was going crazy, bro. I was going crazy. Yeah, you, that man. Because let me, t- I, I, I gotta say this. I treat people with respect. I treat people kind. Mm-hmm. I love people. <clears throat> people don't love you. 
when you sit in, when you sit somewhere and you feel like you treat people good and then you meet the devil face to face, but there's nothing, you can't hit a ghost. When somebody's going in on you and they roasting you and you see comments just laughing at you, look at this fat, plump, big, fat, porky, fat, just succulent, fat, ass. like when you see those comments and you see people jumping in and I see people that are in our chat in their chat laughing, not defending me. That's funny to you? So then the next day I get on stream, he comes into the stream and he was like trying to like act all tough. Like what was that stuff you was talking about stage players? So I, I pulled up the clip, I pulled up the stream and I said, hey, I'm glad that you in here. I was like, everybody shout out to him, shout out to his channel, you make sure y'all follow. It's like, let me show you something. Played the clip for him, the whole clip. And he heard exactly what I said. And then he heard the rest of it. And when you watch a person go from trying to be all like, rah, rah, yeah, rah, rah, I got 300 views off roasting you. But I never got that many views before off my gameplay. But I can get that off of you because you're working hard. So because I'm talking about you, I'm gonna get that view. So I got that off you because I roast you. But then when you and your audience, the same people that you was roasting me, y'all all get humbled because you see that what you saw was wrong. And you saw, I was actually paying respect to y'all, but you decided to disrespect me. So then I got in the grind, I got in the field and I mean, got outside, I grinded, got all my weight off. Then I made another, another video after that. Number one, I dropped off all his, hom we dropped off all his homies sure that did. said that they was God tier, that they was better than us. We dropped off each and every one of them. Hey, nah. Made YouTube videos, hey. put them on and got views off of them and you made money off. Go ahead, I'm sorry, hey, my nah. fault, my fault. Hey, now, have you ever seen like John Wick or you ever seen like a movie you know, like, like Kill Bill? All, you ever I seen Kill Bill? You, ever, you, you remember in Kill Bill when Uma Thurman had the list and she was just crossing people off? You remember that? <laughs> you guys yeah. Know. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. that's really what it was. I promise you that's what it was. It was just like, oh, so you, okay, uh-huh. You, mm-hmm, 210, you, 210, mm-hmm, 210, 210, Oh, you wanna, oh, you wanna, oh, you, you talking about, oh, yo, beat us by luck. Okay, come back around then. Come back around. Multiple times, Nat. Mind you, mind you, Nat. Mind you, hold on, mind you, Nat. Multiple. We don't play like this. We not sitting over there playing like, screen, screen, Jay, screen, screen, mm-mm, mm-mm. Hey, 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 what y'all, hey, what y'all going in the chat? Hey, you stupid, bro. Hold on real quick. <laughs> hey, take that ball. Let me see that rock. Hey, you stupid, bro. Hold on real quick. Hey, bro. Literally, not, no, for real. No. Like, just nonchalant. Like, like you know when, like... Just laughing. You know like, you're playing like a little kid and you don't really take it serious? Like, you yeah. over talking to everybody else? Like, that's really what it was. Yeah. That's how easy just, it was. You guys were just better. You guys were just on another level from, my, from what I'm understanding. And the thing I want to say to the listeners is, like, first of all, bro, like, you have so much, like, heart. Yeah. You, you have so much heart and I hope people that are listening to this can take that and understand that first of all, when you get hate, there's always a, a, a good way to react to it mm -hmm. and you, you handle it in a very professional way, which a lot of people don't. So much mm -hmm. respect to you for that. And secondly, bro, like the fact that you go out sure, there and you grind and you shared your schedule of 290 to 215, you shared your schedule of you're literally sleeping two, three hours a day, which is unheard of and people listening to this podcast aren't going to believe. But I, I recommend them to go look back at your grind. Look back yeah. at how far you guys go have look. Every, it's all documented. I, 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 it's I, all documented. I, 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 would task, documented. I would task somebody, don't be an imposter. I'm going to task you to go back to our two, go, that's hard. go to our YouTube channel. That's, that's an Among Us reference. That's hard. That's that's hard. Reference hard. Catch it. That's hard. That, Among Us. Yep. That was a, no, that, that was an Among Us reference, you know, because, you know. That's not a plug, though. That's not a plug. Yeah, that's not a plug. You pay for that. Send them that clip out. No, 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 That was a bar. I was jumping over people's heads. That's a bar. I tasked y'all to go to our our 2K18 grind. I tasked you. I challenge you to go look. And look at how many videos we uploaded. And look at the times in which they were uploaded. And look at how close together. Mind you, also, if you look at our content, nobody did work for us. Everything that you see in that content is all us. All the editing to the graphic design to all of that, that was us. We did that. We came up with those ideas. Actually, shout out to my guy, Vince, for coming in mm -hmm. later, helping us later on. But from the beginning, we did that. We came up with our overlays. We came up with, that was us, originality. Our brain, our brain was just working. And if you go back and you look and you see how hard we were working, and not just on our channel, 
We got videos on Paul Boy Sin's channel. We had video on Man Man Grunhart's channel. We had videos right. on Cole the Man's channel. We had mm -hmm. videos on G Man's channel. It was videos all across the board, not just from us, and giving people a hundred and eighty five thousand percent on every single video, not cheating anybody out of content if they want to do content with us. Never asked for a dime either. Never asked them Never for asked nothing. Never asked for a dime either. And right. And I can't account for how many days we streamed, how many hours we streamed, not only just the YouTube uploads, but also how many days we streamed out the week, how many hours we streamed out the week. Like we was on 2K TV like three times. That's unheard of to be on 2K TV three, three times. times. Three times. Really, really All of it's on the YouTube channel. All of that's on there. Three times. Like it, it, it's, it was a journey. Like it was a full journey to be where we are right now. And, you know, like some people, some people will look at what we did and be like, I could do it too. What we did is not, it's not a task. It's not this, 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 this list that I just give you and be like, here. It's a mindset. It's so a DNA. way of life. It's in your, it's so in DNA. You. So you, DNA, honestly. When you get tired of failing, when you get tired of people down talking down on your name, when you get tired of feeling like you're useless, when you get tired of feeling worthless, when you get tired of feeling like you're going through the motions, when you get tired of people overlooking you, when you get tired of watching somebody else get all the guts and glory and you not getting none at all, and you're not even asking for any, you just want the respect. You just want the notoriety. But when everybody else keeps overlooking you, you get sick of it. You get tired of it. You get like, you're like hold on. So this is what y'all looking for? No. No, that's not it. This is not what you call entertainment. That's what y'all given. I'm going to show you what real entertainment feels like. I'm going to show you what real comedy, what real joy, what real family, what real brothership. I've never fought my brother. I've never even put, I, I, I've never put my hands on him to fight him. Never. Shout Anything, out to mom and dad. They never let us. We it, couldn't even argue it, in the crib. We couldn't even argue. We couldn't even argue, Nev. Like, you know, we, like, you know, we playing the game. We getting competitive. Course, nah. Like, yeah, none of that. Brothers, yeah. None of that. I, I, I was disgusted to ever see my little brother garbage at anything. Mm -hmm. I see brothers on stream trying to be us and y'all got the wrong attitude. You trying to expose your brother for views. No, I'm gonna expose my enemy with my brother for views. That's the difference between us and other people. You can copy what we do. You can copy the format, but you can't, you, you don't have the mindset. You don't have what we have. Like you don't do what we do. Jay and I were one V one before every stream and push each other, talking smack to each other, pushing each other like, no, if I'm doing this to you, somebody else is gonna do it to you. So you need to beat it now. Understand what you're doing and understand why you're losing. If this game ain't close, that means that you're gonna get picked apart when we go up against somebody else that happens to be even a little remotely close to me. So I refuse to let my brother be even a little bit garbage, not even a little bit. Because you're not about to, you, you, I'm not about to have anybody else making any YouTube videos, any mm -hmm. podcasts, any clips off you at all. Because I'm going to take it personal every single time. And that was the, that's the energy that we have when it comes to doing this YouTube and this Twitch. It's the energy. It's a, it's a mindset. It's who you yeah. are, how you are. So you guys, you guys are completely different than, and this is why, like for me, it's just like this is a privilege to have you guys on the show. To be honest, it's like. You guys are so different than any other streamer I've seen. So I'm not a pro gamer, mm -hmm. but I'm an entrepreneur and I'm a businessman. So when we first got into gaming a year and a half ago, mm -hmm. I took it serious to just start understanding what is esports and like how big is this going to be? Obviously, now we know a lot more. I learned mm -hmm. a lot in the process. We lost a lot of money, made money, whatever, all that kind of stuff. But throughout that time, I've seen a lot of streamers. Yeah. I've looked up all the big, I know all the big streamers, thousands of streamers. I know who's big, who's doing what how much Nick Merck's average, all that kind of stuff. Because I'm like trying to invest myself in it so we can understand how to take over the gaming space and be a big brand in it. Mm -hmm. right. And not many people, to be honest, bro, not many people blow me away. Because I, when I come to a stream, I'm expecting a certain level, especially mm -hmm. if you have like thousands of people watching you. Yeah. I want to see yeah. really good gameplay. I want to see interact with chat. I want to see your stream look hella nice. But I've never seen, and I'm not just saying this because you're on the podcast. I, mm -hmm. I've told our managers, I've told Dev, i told Marcellus this. I've never seen a stream like your guys' stream. And it's not I've never seen a beer like yours. You know what I'm saying? That's what like, I'm saying. You know what I mean? Hey, look, I've never seen, seen so many eyebrows. eyebrows. <laughs> like, like, man, like, hold on. Can we talk about the eyebrows for a second? Like, can we talk about them? 
Do you Whoa, see that man. 90 degree angle on that right hey, side? Look. Do you see it? Look, everything's shaped up. I, like I hey man, hey that. he got he got he got cute for this little yeah. part. Yeah, you see him? I I even call the man cute, bro. I'm just saying, you know what I mean? He got a little oh, haircut. Okay, okay. look a little but, spicy. I'm just yeah, saying. Yeah, I, I got you. But this is exactly what I'm talking about. Like, you know, I, I have a question later on the podcast, but I'm not going to ask you, Mark, because we're talking about it right now. But it's like, yo, like, what makes you guys different? And, like, the reason I want to ask you that is not for you to tell me. Because in my head, I already know all the – I could list a thousand reasons probably right now on paper why you guys are different. But I just want to hear from you guys so the streamers, the gamers that are listening to this can take that. Because I don't think they understand the grind that goes into this. That this is this is a full time job. It's a business. You're an entrepreneur. You got a lot of different things going on, and then on top of that, you're interacting with chat. You guys have hilarious intros. You guys have great some of the best transitions I've seen. Even when you're going to the toilet, or whatever you guys are doing, do you have great screens for that? These these little things that people don't understand. So I'm gonna just throw it to you. You know, take like, I'll give you what is it? Part. Like take three minutes and go. What is the secret what, sauce behind Train J? The secret sauce behind Trey and Jay is really simple. It's passion. It's that simple. And because when you that. have when you have passion, everything else follows. Now, I will also say, you also have to understand that streaming may not be cut out for you. Because, you know, with COVID, everybody is, is a streamer now all of a sudden. So, you know, with that, with that in mind, you have to understand also that this may not be out for you. If it's not for you, just, you know, just understand that and cope with it. But once you align your thoughts with your body and everything is together, you're on one accord, everything else follows. Because when you have passion, when you have heart, when you love what you do, you're going to put your all into it no matter what. Whether it's for you, for somebody else, it doesn't matter. Because one thing you always want to do is no matter what you touch, you always want it to be your best work. Yep. You never want to say, uh, I feel like I could have did better in it. No. Everything, anything that you do, you want to invest all your energy into it because when you invest all your energy into it and everybody sees that you genuinely care about what you do, what you produce, that everybody, they're going to help you and they're going to understand, okay, this is serious. Like they take this serious because I'm not going to lie. There are, you know, a good handful of, of people that stream just to stream. And some of them give, you know, streamers a bad name thinking that, oh, you just play video games all day. No, I take my craft very serious to the point where we do eye exercises. We do yep. hand exercises, eye track training, all that other stuff, because we want to be the best we can possibly be in whatever we do. So not only are you getting high level gameplay, you're also getting entertainment. You're getting comedy while we're playing. You're also getting interaction. So if somebody is going through something, we'll stop the whole stream, stop the whole stream. and literally focus on whatever that specific person is going through to make sure that they come back to see another day. Because it's like, we all know everybody has their tough days. Streamers have tough days all the time. And the thing is with streaming, you're right in front of somebody. So when you're having that bad day, it's clear cut. You can't edit that out. You can't trim it. Nothing. So, you know, with that, we always try to convey the message like it's okay to be imperfect. But as long as you're working on your imperfections, there's no way you can't get better. There's no way. So, like, I, the, the, the secret is passion. You have to love what you do. Once you love what you do, everything else follows because with passion, you try to perfect your craft. hundred percent. It all falls into place. You love what you're doing every single day. You guys yep. wake up and you guys love it. And man, it, bro, this conversation is, is so good. And I, I'm really excited to put this out because I just feel like this is going to help so many gamers because all, we, but not probably not, we're like halfway through the podcast, but like all, all the stuff that's being said right now mm-hmm. are things I'm seeing as issues, you know, from a daily basis from other gamers, whether I'm hearing them talk about something or you just said, like, it's not for everyone. No, it's not. And, it's not. And, and that's not something real. that I really want to put on the world for people. Like, people are trying to grind because they see Ninja or whoever, like, averaging, making millions. I'm just like, bro, like, you may not have what it takes to get there. Right. It's it's a great outlet, but then you go spend 5Gs on a PC and all this kind of stuff. And then and you, never you grow. stream once you a week. You never grow. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's just, I just feel like there's so much into it. That's why I'm excited to keep uncovering it with you guys. So yeah. mm-hmm. let's keep moving through this and let's talk about Let's talk about platforms first. So I'm just going to start going to the gaming side. So obviously you guys are on Twitch, mm-hmm. right? You guys started on Twitch. So how long, how many years have you actually been streaming on Twitch as Trey and Jay? Oh, okay. oh, as Trey and Jay. Oh, as Trey and Jay. Um, you had two different channels, I'm assuming, to start, right? 
So we, we started, we, I, I originally yeah. started streaming in high school. So I was streaming my junior year. So okay. I, and I was streaming on my own account and we actually did, we actually did have our own individual accounts. Okay. And then we joined a group. Then we left the group. Then we actually made our own group, which was team Hasbro's at the time. Yeah. Trey and Jay didn't come along until 2K18. 18. No, 17, 17. Around like April. 17, April, yeah. April, like April, yeah, yeah, 17, yeah. 17, yeah. April, April of 17. Mm -hmm. And then from there, that's pretty much where Trey and Jay started. Nobody could get our name right. So like they would call it, it, it was it was me, Jay, and our, our oldest brother. And we all played different games. Mm -hmm. So my mm -hmm. oldest brother played Madden mm -hmm. uh, in 2K. I played Mortal Kombat and Tekken. Jay played Call of Duty. So mm -hmm. on one channel, we had three different shifts. So Moni would play for about five, five hours. Jay would play for about five hours. I would play five hours. 15 hours a day total on the, on the channel of streaming but just different times. Oh. After my oldest brother quit, yeah, so he quit. I also want to add, Go ahead. Nav, man, when I tell you that power bill. Ooh. That power bill was, man. <laughs> you know another thing, hey, hey Nav, I'm going to be 100 was, for all the listeners. Um, I'm, I'm going to be 100 with y'all. Another reason why we also didn't quit streaming is because our mom told us, if you quit streaming, I'm going to knock you out. Yeah. Because them power bills was like eight hundred dollars. You were so like, invested already. Like, like yeah. we were so invested, <laughs> and she was too. Because yeah. then was some. Because we were streaming like all day long. One power bill was like six hundred dollars. So our mom had. They, yeah. She had pulled us inside. She was like, "Y'all see this bill? Y'all see this bill? Y'all see this bill? Y'all better not ever quit streaming." She said, "Y'all better not if ever quit. quit." Even when I'm gone, if you quit streaming, I'm gonna knock you out. I felt like she was gonna Freddy Krueger me. Like I'm asleep, and I just like I, I just wait. Like I just feel my mom beat the brakes off me in a dream. I wake just up sweating. Beat you out your sleep. Like, uh -uh. Mm -mm. <laughs> yeah. Mm -mm. Like, hey, is, girl, is, did you hit me? <laughs> is it safe to say that your mom is one of your guys' biggest influences in life? Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Um, I, love, I love that not, because not, what you just said, it makes me seem, it makes it seem like you are going to pursue this and going to become, you know, two of the biggest streamers in the world and credit that to her. Yeah, We're, absolutely. Right? Is it, am, I, absolutely. Am, am I, is it fair to say that? Yes. Yeah. In my opinion, I love my that. mom is the strongest woman I've ever seen. To, to be someone who's sick, ill like Ill, sick, Ill sick. with multiple different things of, she a, that she's dealing with she had fibromyalgia right so a lot of people don't know what fibromyalgia is but it's it, it literally just deteriorates your body degenerative right? okay, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. it just just your whole body just starts to just deteriorate little by little you know like you might wake up one day and you feel fine and then the next day you wake up and you can barely stand up because your back is hurting your muscles are just literally deteriorating little by little like Every party, she had, she had degenerative back disorder. She had thyroids. She had arthritis. Um, she had arthritis. She had ventiligo. She had ventiligo. She had, uh, she suffered from migraines and headaches. She suffered seizures. from seizures. Um, she had, I think she had a heart attack one, uh, uh, like a few times. Like, she couldn't get hot she either. Yeah, yeah, she was, a, she had became allergic to, um, she, it was so bad. She was allergic to tape. Mm -hmm. So they had, they had, took her blood sample. Yeah. They put. The, the, tape, yeah. the, the cotton ball mm -hmm. and put the tape on her and literally her arms started burning and then they took the tape oh. off and saw two burn marks on her arm and she had became allergic to tape like that's how bad it was like mm -hmm. she just became and then we had lived in this area it's, it, it, we lived in this bad area mm -hmm. and she developed PTSD because really somebody bad. tried to set our house on fire so it, it we had been through a lot mm -hmm. and and this is why I say, like, some when I say that we were born for, we were born to do this, we were bred to do this. A lot of people don't understand what I mean. When you become an entertainer, you become a streamer, you become this figure, this icon for people. They look up to you, and I don't go, I don't call, I don't have people call me Big Bro because it's some cute little term. When people call me Big Bro is because you can hit my DMs, you can message me personally, and I will message back and be like, Yo, listen, whatever you're going through, I heard you. You're going to make it through it, but you got to go through with this mindset. Stop focusing on the problem, focus on the solution. Mm -hmm. When I give words of advice, I'm not giving it to you because it's just, I'm giving it to you. I'm giving it to you because that's what my mom would have did. My mom would have cared for each and every soul that used to come into our house. My mom used to bring her cousins and everybody in and they didn't deserve it. But she was so nice and she was so sweet that she would give her last to people that would spit on her afterwards. Now, not to make your, your platform um, um, uh, 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 what's it called? Uh, 
<laughs> that, uh, what's the thing with that the, what's the name? What's the thing with the Bible? Uh, um, biblical. Uh, not to make it Spiritual? biblical or or or, or okay, um, okay. about religion, mm-hmm. but um, religious. Sorry. We was religious. Yeah. Sorry, sorry about that. Sorry, sorry. Um, but we was raised up in church. Mm-hmm. Okay. Like when I tell you, as a kid, on Monday I would have to go to a church service. Wednesday. I would have to go to another church service. Mm-hmm. Thursday, I had to go to choir rehearsal and drum. Friday, Friday, I night, would, service. Friday night service. <laughs> Saturday, we would have Christmas, Easter, things, uh, Christmas, Easter, Easter plays. Mm-hmm. And then Sunday, we go into church from seven in the morning all the way till two o'clock in the afternoon. You and lying. It was a nighttime you service. Lying. We had you to go lying. To all right, all right. We was two, not at church seven, from no seven in the morning to two I, in the afternoon. All right, seven to now, four. Now we went to a black church. You know black seven, church don't get out till to, to the pastor say, okay. to the pastor do so, that final so, prayer, and that's the last time. So <laughs> Come on, that, now. that whole, like, like I know people are like, how would you stay up to, like, you only got three hours to sleep, that's fake. Let me explain. Mm-hmm. From a kid, I was, we were always in church. We was always, we, we had to, we had to not only learn from school, do homework from school, mm-hmm. learn Christmas plays and Easter plays and learn word for word and be able to have to learn other people's parts just in case they didn't show up because we were a big name. We were a huge part of our church. So when people didn't show up, I would have to learn somebody else's lines and play someone else's character right. and still have to go to school and learn something in school, do a project for school, then have to do her, have to learn songs for the church, have to learn how to play a song or do a solo if I needed to. It, we had so much stuff to do and still do video games and play sports and keep up with what and was we back. were also doing competitions too. The oh, little, the Bible competitions. We had to do these too. competitions too because we would earn money and then my mom would take the money and she would spend it for bills or whatever the case may be. Like we would do these little com- or these essay competitions and we're not, and we were always working, always grinding, always busy. And we got that from our mom and not just to complain. My mom didn't complain. She smiled the whole time. Yeah. She would laugh and smile and make other people feel better. And she would feel terrible. Mm-hmm. I mean, she would go to a church service. She would do the sunshine band. She would sometimes do the ushering. She would do the refreshments. She would do all of this stuff, get home. And I'm in the room and she's shaking and just having a seizure. And I'm rubbing her, mom, it's gonna be okay. Mom, I'm right here. And that type of stuff emotionally, it hurts. It hurts. You're sitting there going through this pain and all you want to do is get her the best doctor in the world. Somebody to yeah. fix my mom. Like, why, why is it so hard for y'all to come and fix her and get whatever, whatever this is? Like, the frustration of hearing we don't know what to do. Like, like, we, like what do you mean you been, don't know? Been through that, bro. It's tough. Like, I already know what you guys feel. It's tough. Yeah. And, and, for, and for us, it's that right there. I could laugh. I could sit there and let somebody talk about me for almost two hours and roast me. And still be able to be like, hey, shout out to you, man. Hey, man, make sure you guys follow. He's a great player, great stage player. Y'all show him some love in the chat, man. Takes a bigger person, man. You guys, you guys have been through a lot. You learned a lot. Like I said, persevered through a lot. That's why there's so much respect. Your mother's also a very, very strong woman. Thank you. Oh, yeah, it's, it's it. Great Thank to see you. that the impact she had on you guys and the way she raised you is like I said, it's another reason as to why we're here. And it's another reason to why wherever this journey is going to take you guys and wherever your championship is going to lead. Mm-hmm. I'm looking forward to seeing that and being able to relate back to this podcast and say mm-hmm. like, damn, man, look, they did it. You know, they did it for the mom. Like mom is good shining, shining on you guys and you guys yeah. are happy. Mm-hmm. So, and shout out to our dad too. Like, Facts. Shout out to the like. I don't. I don't. I don't want to make it seem like my not like our dad wasn't there. He was definitely there. He just porn star buck, and I don't know why. Um, like my pops, um, my pops just was, my pops just gave us a toughness that I can't explain. Like my dad didn't have the opportunity to be that that coach dad where mm-hmm. he could just be at home all day and train us. He wasn't able to do that. You know, my pops was also chasing his own dreams. And he wanted to be an art. My dad was is was an amazing singer. My dad is an amazing singer. Okay, cool. And um, he got featured on BET, oh. uh, Showtime at the Apollo. Like my pops was, he was on his way. Mm-hmm. But when my mom really got sick, my dad had to give it up, right? Because you can't keep ch- like like who like I was a kid at the time. My oldest brother was a kid. We got to go to school. So who going? Who gonna take care of her? Who gonna take her to the doctor? If he's out all the way in Miami, performing, doing shows, 
how my mom gonna get to the doctor? So when I'm not just doing this just for me, like I feel like there is a man in his fifties who was talented, who deserved it all, who sacrificed it all, who really wanted what he had. And back then in the seven, in the eighties, my dad was just getting cheated out of his money by managers and crooked people in the record industry and people that was just stealing his money and stealing his ideas and just, just evil at his finest. And I'm not doing this just for me. I feel like my dad deserves a break. My dad deserves to be able to have things that he didn't have as a child. Like my dad has a hard story. Like if you were, if you were to have my dad speak, you hear his story as a kid growing up. My dad lived in Muncie, Indiana. Now, a lot of y'all don't know who, what Muncie, Indiana is because it's a little, it's a little town, small. very small. Mm-hmm. And my grandfather was a great man, but he didn't always make the best decisions. For two years, my dad lived without electricity and gas. Okay, like I, I just want to- I don't think let, he caught that. Let me, let me, no, let me I say that. I just wanted to see where he was taking it. No, no, not you. I'm talking about the listeners. I'm talking about the listeners. They didn't catch it. They didn't, they didn't catch it. They didn't catch it. Let me say that. Let me say that one more time. They didn't catch it. My dad lived in Muncie, Indiana, a small town, in this little bitty house. And he lit. My grandfather didn't make the greatest decisions in the world. My dad lived without electricity and gas for two years. Meaning, in Muncie, Indiana, it gets it's cold. cold. It's cold. In order to use a stove back in that time, there were no electric stoves. You needed gas. So if you didn't have gas, that meant you couldn't make home cooked meals. So the only way that they could cook food was they had to dig a hole in the backyard, put coal and fi- and make a fire, and then put steaks and then build a, a, their own little right. pit to cook food outside. He lived without they lived without electricity, so that means they couldn't just walk up and flick the light on. They had candles and they had lamps and they had to put oil in the lamps. Now imagine living like that for two years as a kid. You seven, eight, nine. Two years. For two years, you live like that. For two years. That's different. My dad had a hard, he had a hard life. So sometimes my pops could be, he can be very rough around the edges. Sometimes you have a conversation with him and you just feel his pain as he's talking, he don't always have the sweetest tone when he's speaking to you. Because sometimes that irritation of all the stuff that he's been through in his life, it just kind of spews out at different moments. So you might be complaining about something, like something that you might complain about, man, bro, my feet is killing me, bro. I hate these Jordans. My dad will literally... (laughs) Wow. You say something you like off the hinges. Bro. You complain about something like, uh-uh. like something tiny like that. It's like, man, I hate the fact that this light keeps flickering. Like, I don't know why my mom just wants to switch the light out. <laughs> my dad would literally chew your head off <sighs> for complaining about not fixing a flicker in the <laughs> light bulb. Shut up. Because that's just because he had been through some of the you harshest things. Yeah, absolutely. like, um, he was poor. Growing up, like my dad was literally one of those kids. Like you would know, you watch those old, those old school movies, like the Little Rascals and stuff. Like my dad was one of those kids. He was stealing stuff at the at the at the grocery store. Like they was like him, like they was literally teaming up to steal stuff, like cause distraction. And they would steal like lettuce, tomatoes, green peppers, onions, potatoes. My dad was eating that the, those syrup sandwiches, cinnamon sugar sandwiches, sandwiches, like sugar sandwiches, sugar water. That's yeah. my dad was living yeah. that. He was living it. That was his life. So. When we used to complain about, oh, I hate KFC. My dad would slap the man. We would get man. hit in the back of the, you better eat that, that. And you would just see it come out of him. Like, and for me, this grind is not just for me. It's not just for me. What I'm trying to do is not just for me. I feel like my dad deserves, he deserves whatever car that he wants. He deserves whatever, Absolutely. whatever that. things that he wants. And I want to build something that goes beyond because yes. to see his day, to, to see the stuff that he's been through and how much he sacrificed out of his life and how much I've been through, how much he's been through. We've been through a lot and nobody knows this story. You just see us on stream and some people, they judge us now because we left 2K. We don't have the same views that we had before. And they'd be like, oh, y'all, 
you don't know. And every single time you speak on me and you say, oh, y'all fell off or y'all, it, 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 it's a drive. Like, okay, I fell off. I'm about to spend 16 hours today training. Cause you're going to regret talking. You're going to regret this, regret the fact that you say it, you're speaking about something you have no clue. You don't know nothing about, but it's okay. Because I'm not going, I'm not going, I'm not going, I'm not going to treat you like Judas. Nope. Because even Paul, even, again, even Paul, even, Jesus told Paul, he's like, hey, mm -hmm. man, hey, you're going to denounce me three times, watch. Mm -hmm. And that's what happens to us. The people that once loved us are the same people that talk bad about us now because we don't average the same amount of views because we switch communities. But that time is coming. You just got to be patient and stop focusing on what people got to say. Again, stop focusing on the problem. Focus Find on the solution. solution. Yeah. No, I love it, man. And you guys were molded by two great individuals, your mom and your dad. Now there's more context to the story and for the yeah. listeners. Mm -hmm. And I love it. And again, going back to that, everything you guys are doing are bigger than yourselves. And when, when you're, what you're trying to achieve, what you're trying to accomplish is bigger than yourself, mm -hmm. it changes the whole narrative. It just changes everything. And you have a whole new perspective. So it's amazing. So just touching on something you guys actually just said, you, know, you had, had the 2K community. Let's talk mm -hmm. about this real quick, okay? You had the 2K community. You're averaging. You can tell me what you're averaging. And now you're switched to Call of Duty and other mm -hmm. games and streaming, and you've seen a considerable drop in your mm -hmm. viewership. Can you so guys touch on that? Like what it went from 2K to now? So for 2K, mm -hmm. um, you know, shoot, 2K18, we was averaging between like 5K oh, to okay. like 15, oh. 20K a video. Yeah, like 5K to like 15, 20K a video. On and Twitch, then, we were averaging like two to like 400 yeah. views. Two, yep. Yeah, about two, 400. Yeah, on yeah. Twitch. Then go over to YouTube, I mean, go to 2K19, oh, man, it took off. Like, we was averaging between 50,000 to 500,000 views a video. And, like and on it, Twitch, we were, like, 1.5K to, like, 2K a stream. To too. 2K a stream. Hey, like, 1.5 to 2K a yeah. stream. So it was, like, mm -hmm. it was, like, yo, like, like, dang. But the thing was, the money didn't equal out to the views. Right. So, like, a lot of people think that just because you get, you make, 200,000 views on a video that you're getting paid like millions. See, 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 that, see, and, see, and see looking just made, see? That's see? the thing. People, people now mind you, on that. right? <laughs> like, mind you, people are thinking that, oh, we got 300,000 views. We're making like a million, a, a video. million like, a video. No. Like, no, no, not even close. And, and the thing was, and the thing was, I was like, yo, we reached the top. And honestly, we're almost at a million on one video. Like we we're, we're, we got like 300K, 200K, 400K. And why does it feel like we're not making that much money? Like we making money, but it's not what you see oh, yeah. on, it's not yeah. what you see on YouTube. Like you see people make, and they be flashing cars and And I'm yeah. like, we not, we're making the same amount of views. How, are we doing something wrong? And I'm and we putting like five ads in a video, like six ads in a video. I'm okay. like, okay. Yeah. I'm not understanding why are we not making as much money or, or su supposedly the money that we're supposed to be making. Mind you, we were unsponsored at that time. That too. Didn't have a, my, we got all these views. We didn't been on 2K TV. We getting all these shout outs. We meeting all these great people. But why? Didn't have a single, didn't have sponsor. A single sponsor. A single sponsor at that time. Yeah. So at the, so, so Jay and I, we go on vacation and I'm not gonna lie to you, Nav, I, the passion, it ran out for 2K. Remember I told you we would yeah, beat everybody. Yeah, we would, a lot we would of just people be laughing. from a lot of people. Yeah, we'd just be laughing. We'd be playing and beat. We'd be, not, we was beating people so bad that nobody wanted to play us. Every dude that was like, oh, I'm a, I'm a clout god. I'm a clout chaser. All of those people, we dropped off. I mean, bad. And not even not even to diss anybody, but all the, they would play other YouTubers and they would have close games or beat them. Play us and we smacked them 21-0, 21-3, 21 21-2. It got to a point where nobody wanted to play us. So we, we would be on for like six hours. With and five of the hours is us just talking. Just talking. With an empty sideline. Just like talking we, on you, the court. You look at the sideline and me and Jay, we just talking, laughing. We watching battle rap. We watching YouTube. Literally, we're on the court. Yeah, and at bro. the top okay, left yeah. corner is us. Mm -hmm. At the bottom right corner is a YouTube video. And we're watching YouTube because we can't get a game. We play somebody. They swear to God, they're the top stage players, pro-am players. And we're just Bodying them, and then they're like, "Hey, man, I, I ain't playing y'all no more. Y'all, y'all, y'all different." So then, that passion, it just, it just, it left. Like, I was like, "Jay, I don't want to do this no more." 
and also around that time when we went on vacation, a lot of the big content creators were getting hacked mm -hmm. and people okay. were like stealing their information, yep. you know, calling the hotlines, acting like they were them, changing their information, so on and so forth. And, you know, with us going on vacation and averaging that high views, mm -hmm. everybody knew who we were. And there were talks and rumors like we were going to be next. We were on this list. And so we were like, you know what? We think it'd just be best, you know, because just this leave. is always also a decision too. Since 2K17, we was like, you know what? Like maybe, maybe, you know, we should just go off and play something else. Yeah. So when that happened, it was like, okay, that's the sign that we need. It's time, it's time to leave. It's time to leave. And it's time to leave. After we left, it was like a breath of fresh air. We went to BO4 and, and just yeah. tell you how good how good God is. Like we went to BO4 and when I tell you everybody just spoke bad about us. Like, I mean, we had people making YouTube in the 2K community making YouTube videos on us, you know, pretty much just being like, oh, oh transgender leaving, they're leaving the community. It's the stupidest thing that they could do. They're they're on the right, they're they're the biggest stars right now. Like, why are they leaving? Like, and then as we started getting into Call of Duty and we started getting into more, we started meeting just the biggest names in BO4 at the time. And we had met like uh, Optic Embos, uh, Doug is Raw, Swag, uh, Swag Proofy, Gangsters, Gangsters Youngsters. Youngsters, um, and uh, 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 meeting all of these people, they were just putting in words like, yo, these two guys that are coming in here, I've never seen them before, but their stream is amazing. And then we came up with the idea of AJ, why don't we do a, a stream that nobody's ever done before? Where you have two perspectives at the same time. Mm -hmm. So we grind it hard. Okay. We, gr we grind it hard, hard. And we finally got the money and then we got this decked out PC. Okay. Put two Elgados in it. And it was the first time that the car community has seen two perspectives at once. Mm -hmm. And then we started learning how to do transitions, how to switch the screens up. And be able to, okay, so it went from J screen to my screen, now it goes back to this screen. And then we got even better when we was like, wait, let's do the half and half, like one half vertical, one that, half man. horizontal. So now we got four. We got one, your main screen, I'm small. Then your, I'm small. Then your so small, I'm big yeah. screen. Then we're horizontal, now we're vertical. And then we just started adding even more and just started just decking out, like, you know what? We need a producer, somebody that can do the transitions yeah. while we're in game. Yep. And then my wife was like, yo, I want to work, but I don't know what to do. And I said, well, we need somebody to produce the stream for us. And so now my wife is, she has her own producer. desk. She has mm -hmm. a key. She has her own, her own, uh, 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 what's the name to change the screens. She can control the OBS. So now Jay and I can just focus on the gameplay. And then I was like, Jay, we need some more originality. Right. So now, now mind you, now back to the averages, our views dropped. We went from averaging 1.5K on Twitch to 2 to two K. We dropped to like 150 to like two, two, 230. Mm -hmm. So that's what we average in between 150, 230. That's what we average in between. Right. But you see, the production is like, yo, this is like a 15,000 view channel. Their production is insane. Yep. Right. And all of the stuff that you see, that's created by us. That's us. So after we leave 2K, we get out of there and we get flown out to our first event ever by, Car by Blizzard. By Blizzard. By Blizzard. Only three. Now, mind you, I've, I've never played Call of Duty before. I've, I've never been a Call of Duty person. So this was, a, this was a brand new thing for me, Nav. Like this was like, now, now Nav, I know you a baller, but on the business side, it's new. It's like, okay, yeah. I'm coming over to gaming. So I'm hungry, but I don't know nothing. Yeah. Same as you. Two months in, we get flown out to Blackout After Dark. And this is the biggest event for the Battle Royale scene for Call of Duty. I'm, I see people like okay. Formal, okay. Skump, the, uh, Team, uh, uh, T, Maven, the whole UIU team, the whole LG team. This was before they... It was before they teams, before they changed the creators. Dallas Empire and stuff like that. Yeah, it had commentators over like it was a real deal know. tournament. It was a real deal tournament. Shout out, shout out to all the guys, Miles and and, and Momo and mm -hmm. and and, and uh, Teep and Maven and Merc and all those guys. Like we got to meet all of them, and I I had to go by myself because Jay's flight ended up getting canceled. So I had to fly for some reason. They they did our flights two different days, so I flew out by myself. I was like, man, I've never played Call of Duty. I'm out here playing with a, I'm only two months in in Call of Duty and I'm out here playing with pros. 
These are CDL professionals that I'm playing up against. And I held my own. I didn't get bodied. Didn't nobody say like, what is she doing? Nope, I was out there trying to ball like, yo, I don't care what you're talking about. Y'all got years on this game. I got two months. We go, I'm going to make y'all work. Mm-hmm. I'm going to make you work. I promise you. So in the, in the broadcast, you hear like dude saying like, yo, this Trey from Trey, yo, do you see his movement? He has the best movement I've ever seen. Damn. And just to hear in two months, when I tell you, Nav, I was working hard trying to get my movement together, trying to get my shot. Jay was training. Jay was like, all right, listen. Now, Jay's been playing Call of Duty for like 15 years. I've never played. I've always been a battlefield person. So in those two months, Jay was on my neck. Like, yo, look, you're going to put on the show for us. Jay couldn't make it. So the next month, they said, you know what? Not only were you entertaining, but we need both the brothers there. Because you were entertaining. Everybody was loving you in the chat. So they flew us out a second time. Mm -hmm. But this time, they flew both of us out. We got up there. Oh, man. Even more people showed up. We had different pros up there now. So now it was like... Uh, uh, it was different pros that were there this time. And shout out to John. Shout out to a uh, light, light, uh, light, light skin. Uh, pr- uh, what's his name? Stud. Stud. Shout Stud. out to my guy, Stud. Oh yeah, Study. <laughs> um, we we just we had such a fantastic time, man. We just met so many great people, and and they just loved us. Like they really loved us. We we did great. We tied up for third place, but then we ended up taking sixth. But we tied up for third, so it was like f- to be. We, it was a streamer team. Yeah, it was. It was, mm-hmm. it was us two. A dreamer girl, shout out to her and uh and Bobby Poff. Mm-hmm. And we just we all just was trying to put on against all of these pros that were playing. We're playing against CDL teams. And I wanna I just wanna let you know now we were count we were counted out as counted soon out. as the tournament Facts. started. Like Facts. they said it during the broadcast, like you know, we have the streamer team, but you know, we're not really expecting them to do anything. Dang. It's like yeah. dang, bro, like they, like, out. Like, they didn't even have faith in us at all. No, but but then we showed that, like, yo, listen, like we we're not garbage out here. We we don't even have like these are CDL pro. Like these are all team. Why why this is LG? They've been playing for years. Like optic. Like this is these are pro teams that we're mm-hmm. playing against, and we only been playing together for two days. <laughs> yep. So you know what I mean? Like so so it was it was just so different, man. Yeah. Like and then and then we ended up getting our very first sponsor ever. You know, our first ever sponsor was a chair sponsor, and they're no longer in business. But okay. Then afterwards, we got this chair sponsor, but then we got. Then we got a, a drink sponsorship, and then we got uh, um, um, eye, uh, 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 eye health care sponsorship. And then next thing you know, we ended up getting um, uh, what's it called? Um, uh, Twitch, Twitch opportunity. So now Twitch hits us okay. up, and they're like, "Hey, we saw your channel. How would you guys like to do a, a, a Coca Cola stream?" Mm-hmm. What? <laughs> but and I told Jay, I'm like, "Bro, we don't even average a thousand views no more." Mm-hmm. And then. They was like, we love y'all content, and we just want to see y'all. Just we just want to see what you guys are doing on a bigger stage. We destroyed that Coca Cola stream. The feedback was, we've never had a funny like this was the most Coca Cola loved you guys. Y'all was amazing, and this is when Coke Energy first started. Yeah, when they first, when Coke, when Coke Energy, Energy first, came first out. started coming out, yeah, Coke Energy, that, yeah, yeah, and that's when they 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 put us right on the forefront on Twitter to be like, hey, then the next one we get. We get Chex Mix, mm-hmm. and then we get we did um, um, Adobe uh, Creator Cloud, and then we did Hot Pockets. And mind you, we don't even average the same views anymore. But you would ask, how are y'all still? How are you guys getting opportunities from Twitch? Well, let me give you all a little bit of a blueprint. First of all, Jay and I don't say the N word on stream. That's number one. We don't cuss. Sometimes I slip up, but I but I ask God for forgiveness real fast. You know what I mean? We set out to be different and to care about people. No matter who you are in the stream, you're going to feel like family when you're in here. And because of those little things, Twitch, you know, administrators saw that. And there are thousands upon thousands of streamers. Again, we only average 150 to 240 views. So you would ask yourself, well, why are they giving it to y'all when there's people that have way more views than you? Your opportunities on Twitch has nothing to do with your viewership. It has nothing to do with your sub count. It has something to do with your entertainment, the value you bring. When you bring us onto this podcast, we still have lesser views. Nap, you're a name. You could ask anybody 
to come on this podcast. And I'd be like, Nav, is that you? Nav with the cute beard? Yeah, I'll go on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, right? Like, hey, that was slick. Anybody that was slick. You can, okay. have, you can literally okay. have anybody come on here. Because you're Nav, y'all, y'all in the lab. Like, we all know who you guys are. In the lab is a huge name, bro. But it's huge. You saw us and you said, wait, hold on, hold up, hold up. Wait, who are these two brothers? I, I wait, I gotta have a conversation. And it has nothing to do with our viewership. It has nothing to do with how many followers we have. It has something to do with who you are, that energy you bring, that attention. Give me a second real quick. Hold on real fast. Oh, dude. I, I, did, I didn't even put man. the comics. You see how I just drew you in right there? Man, I didn't you even got put me it on. too, man. You see crazy. how I just drew y'all attention? Man. You guys are because massive entertainers, bro. It, it doesn't matter. It doesn't, it's, it's about giving your all to what you're doing. Stop walking, like, you know how you hear a song and you hear that one song and you just be like, and then you catch yourself and you go back to doing what you're doing. <laughs> I'm talking about that song. When you hear Michael Jackson, mm-hmm. if you hear, do, 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 do. Hey. you see how you're doing that? Look, 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 look. look. You, see you? you don't care who's looking at you. No. You don't care. No, no. You see what they about doing me. This is what gets people's attention. Hold up, hold up, hold up. do that little. They use like that. You must deal with that. <laughs> I'm about to see. It's because Jeez. it's because the energy I'm putting into what I'm doing, mm-hmm. that drive I'm putting into, it's gonna get one or two reactions from you. Either you're gonna call me a weirdo or you're gonna laugh. Yeah. It's it. it yeah. Does, but even if you call me a weirdo, you're still, you're gonna, still gonna keep watching. Still gonna be there. Yeah. You're still gonna. That's be the there. whole point. Yeah. The whole point is is that when you do something, it doesn't matter if you're a streamer, if you're a singer, if you're a rapper, if you're an entertainer, if you're a, a cashier, if you're a hostess, if you're that person that spit the fire out your mouth at a, at a circus show, the fact that you can grasp somebody's attention, and you give your all, your one hundred percent passion to what you're doing, and you're doing it in a way that can nobody copy the format. They can't copy what you do. You're going to you're going to blow up. You're going to, even if you don't blow up, even if you only average 400 views, 500 views, the fact that you can do that for, if you took 400 pennies and put that in somebody's hand, they'd be like, are you stupid? I'm not about to count this. You got to see views the same way. If I give you a hundred pennies now, it's only a hundred, but in your hand, it feel like you gave me a thousand. You got to see it just like that. Every time that you, you get your paycheck, and you get a $200 paycheck and you go, if I took 200 pennies and I put, if I took $200 worth of pennies and put that in somebody's hands, this would be a lot. Count it as a lot. Now, make more. Keep giving your all until you become the manager, until you become the supervisor. Keep giving your all. Take that, that 300, put it, okay. I promise you, I'm gonna turn this 300 one day. I'm gonna go from 300 to 1500 to 3K to 4K, to 6K, to 10K, to where I'm on salary. I promise you. But you just got to keep giving that same passion, that same drive every single day, even when you tire. And the passion also comes for bad days. Those, that's, those, were, those are the days right there. Those it comes with bad days, you have too. breakthroughs. The days you don't want to do the something best. are the days you have you breakthroughs. You do it. Yeah. Right. Yes. And, you know... Applying that method to streaming, you know, a lot of people get discouraged because they grind for two or three months or they grind for six months and they see, okay, my views aren't changing. Like my my views are still the same. Well, if you look at it logically, if you have 15 people watching you live, just think of them actually sitting in front of you. Right. A lot of people have problems with public speaking. Right. So if you have 150 people sitting in front of you watching you play the game, how are you going to perform? You have to. You have to perform. Yep. So a lot of people look at views like, okay, well, my views are low. No, no, it's a start. It's a everybody story. started at the bottom and everybody worked their way from the bottom all the way to the top. And every, every streamer has had their phases of views. Everybody, no, 100%. nobody just yep. goes from zero views to a hundred thousand overnight. No. It doesn't happen. No, it's not possible. The consistent grind. Yeah. It's not possible. So it's like, you, you have to understand that everything happens for a reason and every adversity an opportunity comes from it anytime adversity happens an opportunity is coming from it so a lot of people you know all the listeners out there do not be discouraged from streaming please don't right. because a lot of people invest all this money and only do it for six months and they're like you know what yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. I didn't grow, so you know, take years. Like it, it takes ta- years. This takes years. You gotta find yourself. This ta- there are people that have been doing this for eight years, eight nine years, years yeah. ten years, and are just now getting yeah. their breakthroughs. Yeah, facts. Just now. now, people forget that Ninja was streaming for eight years before he actually started making millions. He he was streaming for he was a pro player, mm-hmm. and it took him eight years to where he is right. That took mm-hmm. over ten years to get where he is right now. People just think it's just overnight. Like, overnight, like no. Again, I don't want this to just be about gaming. It's not, and it's not just about being an athlete. Don't think that just because you yeah. come from the hood or you come from that it's just about being an athlete. It doesn't matter what you do. You could be a lawyer. It don't matter. You have to first, you have to go through the small stages, the small part. And then you gotta keep, you gotta find yourself. And then you're gonna wake up one day and you're just gonna be like, I got it. This is it. I know who I am. I'm me. This is who I'm supposed to be. Once that clicks, once you get that that click, mm-hmm. it's over after that. It's over. You are you are going to be phenomenal at whatever you do. Not just gaming, not just sports. It's whatever you choose to do. But you first ha- like that dude. Let me, quick sample. That dude. Salt Bay. <laughs> <It's all Bay. laughs> first of all, Bay. first of all, this. Everybody knows that this is the worst way to season anything. You know how many days he woke up with the Python hand doing this? Just practicing this all day? <laughs> you know how many days he probably did? He probably had the Vince Young sidearm. He probably tried the sideways. <laughs> he probably he tried this way. Sidearm. He probably tried this way. He had the little cryptic hand. He tried the little baby thing. He try- I'm pretty mm-hmm. sure he did multiple different ways until he found it. Yep. He, put the little- he put the little Morpheus glasses on, and yeah. he was just like, bow. And afterwards... Friend. You notice the swag that he has? Yep. I'm pretty sure he always had that swag. With that little ponytail, I'm pretty sure he always had that swag. But it takes a minute. He grew into it. It takes years to perfect that. It takes years to perfect our energy. Mm -hmm. Y'all don't know. You don't know how many arguments we didn't been through. You don't know how many times we didn't, we walked around the house, didn't speak to each other. How many times we, we didn't, we didn't had intense conversations, how many games we lost together, how many times we sat down and watched film and been like, bro, you got to stop doing this. And being like, bro, like, well, look at what you're doing. Like, all right, all right, listen, listen, stop, stop, hold on. We arguing. We don't need to argue. Me, you need to sit down and, and figure this out together and see you don't know the work that's been put in behind the scenes just the same way to, in order to get buff, you got to put that work in. It's just the same thing with your relationship or you personally. You got to be sore in order to get gains. You got to be sore for yourself. Like your personality, sometimes you're going to wake up and be like, damn, bro, like, like, it's just like, it's just like people just don't like what I'm doing, bro. That's you being sore. It's you sitting there trying to figure it out and then you got to change yourself. Okay, I'm not going to get mad when I lose. When I get shot and killed, I'm not going to get upset. I'm not going to rage. I'm going to just eat that up. I'm going to bottle that. I'm going to get shot and be like, did you feel that? You felt that? You felt that, right? Oh, very zen. Mm-hmm. It's different, mm-hmm. but that takes time. Yeah, it takes it takes practice. It takes time. It don't come in the first year. It won't come in the second year. It won't come in the third year. Nope. Kobe was not great his first, second, and his third year. Greatness takes time, man. People don't. It takes time. People like I think a lot of people just want it to come quick, right? Just like how they want to make. Yeah. Like I don't have it now, but. Look at the stock market right now. Everyone's just trying to make a million today. But like the process is like the funnest part about everything that we're doing, everything we're trying to build. And like the mentality you guys have built together mm-hmm. as, a cohesive, as a cohesive group, that takes hella time. That mm-hmm. took you time to refine, to get to this yeah. point, to be so mentally sound. Because like, first of all, you guys have answered so many questions by talking, which is great. The questions that I have, you guys naturally answered them. Mm-hmm. But a lot of people... um will have issues with gaming. Like, I don't want to say like mental issues, but like mental health becomes a big part of it. And mm-hmm. I think you guys probably face your fair share of it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. How we're talking about it now in terms of how you guys wake up, how you handle certain moments by being Zen and just the mentality of just being different and thinking different. That's key. Mm-hmm. That's key. So um, I think I've said it like 30,000 30, times, but I commend you guys again on that. And just being bigger than bigger than the game or being bigger than just a gamer. Like I said, yeah. there's so much more going on, right? You guys are building yourselves into like, not young. You got one young man, we got one old man, but like you be, you guys are- <laughs> <laughs> Oh, y'all. Right, man, this interview is yo. over. Bro. Hey, this interview is yo. over, bro. It's over. Hey, yo. 
I'm not gonna lie. I knew he was low key about the violin because he stuttered it's for a second. Good, he paused. Okay. I'll he take was that. Like, I, you I'll, know, I'll take that. I'll take know. it. But look, let's 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 keep building. Um, I know we've, it's almost been like two hours. Are you guys still okay for some time here to go over a little bit? Yeah. yeah. All right. So, um, let's just let's talk about this real quick because you guys mentioned it before. Um, but I want the li- I want the listeners to take as much as they can from you guys because I really see you guys as like true professionals of of the game of what you guys are trying to build. So preparation. You, you touch on a bunch of stuff. You do the finger strengthening, the aim exercises. Can you just touch on this a little bit and maybe give some tips to the listeners of how they can improve? One, well, first things first, your success is all determined by your routine. So yep. first things first, when you first wake up, you should not be touching your phone. That's the first thing. You should not be touching your phone. If you touch your phone, that you're already starting your day off bad. Because the way your brain works, when you first wake up, you're in a certain mind state, mind state to where whatever you put in your subconscious, it's going to be there and it determines your day. So if you first wake up and go on Twitter and see something bad, like somebody get hurt or like see something negative, that already is in your subconscious where it's like, okay, well, look like today's probably going to be negative. And then once you get that ball rolling, that's when things just start, just start happening to where it's like, okay, now the sink ain't working. Now, the, now your keys, you can't find your keys. Like. So for me, my routine is I wake up every day at 8 a.m. Wake up every day at 8 a.m. I listen to either a motivational speech from Eric Thomas or I listen to some positive affirmations, stuff like that. Then I come over, I do my eye exercises, my hand exercises. Then we do aim training. Then we do meditation. Then we actually do training in game where we go into custom matches and play against bots, work on different things that we may have seen. And then, you know, then we actually get on stream, get off stream, maybe take like an hour, hour and a half break, come back, either do some editing. We'll more work training. out we'll work, we're, we're in the stream. That too. Work out mm-hmm. after the stream. Mm-hmm. Then meditate. Like while we're working, we'll do work. We'll work out your body workout. Mm-hmm. Then we'll do eye workouts while we're working out. So like, you know, like when you, uh, like basketball players, like they'll have that that uh, machine where you, it's like the hand reaction speed. Like you got to hurt, yeah. you got to hit yeah. the lights. Mm-hmm. Thoughts, yeah. So for mm-hmm. us, since we use our hands, since we're using our eyes, will be left in ways to say like uh, one of us will be doing curls. The other person will be that we have the TV that's in front of us. So this is this is not a living room. This is our studio. This is our yeah. office. So and the TV's in the front. So we'll be sitting down. One will be one. I'll be curling. Jay will be sitting down on a knee, and we'll be watch, He'll be watching an eye exercise video, doing eye exercises. As soon as I'm done, set. I'll say set. Walk out. Jay will go, and we'll replace each other. Now Jay goes do his set real quick. I'm watching. I'm watching the eye exercise set. We switch, and it's just it's just a you're constantly working out. Not only am I working out my eyes, but now I'm working out my body at the same time. So now your your visual tracking is getting a lot better. Your concentration, your uh, peripheral view is getting a lot better. But now your your body's getting better. Then after we're done working out and we work out hard, like there's we don't break at all. Like there's no breaks. Like you once you're done with your set, switch. Done with your set, switch. Keep going. Just keep going. We're not gonna stop at all because it's two of us. The one thing I hate is when you go to the gym with somebody and they want to sit there and have a conversation with you. Like, there's yeah. nothing to talk about here. It's if you're not telling me, keep going, spot, one more, push yourself, that's not it. Give me another one. If I'm not hearing that, don't don't work. You can't work out with me. I don't want to talk about nothing else but what we're doing right now. After we're done, we take 15 minutes because you're tired, you winded, you, you need to catch yourself. We sit down, lay on the floor, shut all the lights off, turn the RGB lights, everything goes off. It goes pe- complete, pitch black in here. Lay on your back, sit down. We turn on some, we turn on um, um, meditation music. We sit down for 15 minutes and just sit there and just meditate, because now you need to regain yourself. You need to get a hold of your breathing. You need to get a hold of your mental, because when you're tired mentally, you start checking out. Oh, I'm yeah. not sure if I really want to train tonight. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Nope, 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 nope. And you start training in your mind what you're about to do right now. Start so that visualizing. When, start visual. You start, start visual, visual, visual training so yeah. that when you get here. You're not caught up by surprise. You're not. No, you know exactly what you're coming over here to do, and you're doing exactly what you were already thinking before you got here. Mm-hmm. Next day, wake up, and it might be different the next morning. So the next morning, we might we'll get up, um, do eye training first. Mm-hmm. They come out a stretch, for, for stretch. Got to stretch. Got to stretch. Got to stretch. Stretch. Gotta Especially stretch. if you're a keyboard and mouse player, um, you stretch. <laughs> yeah. Then you come over here. You watch film yep. for about 30 minutes. Did look that at your today. Gameplay. We yep. did that today. Look at your gameplay. Yep. Study what you did wrong. Then you go into then you go into custom match. Get some tra- get your practice in. That's like you doing layup drills. You're doing like before a game, 
you're going to do layup drills. You're going to do, you know what I'm saying? A little three man weave. Mm -hmm. That's your practice. Right. You know what I mean? Like that's your practice. So, um, so yeah, that's it. That's it. You guys are taking like such a, like, obviously we have an esports team, very small. I I get to know a lot of the gamers. I get to see what people are doing on a daily basis and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But I just know that the mental preparation, this is what I'm going to compare it to. And it's not on the same level, Mm -hmm. but it's, it's very comparable. And, um, we'll start moving through this podcast a little bit quicker because we've talked about so much good stuff, but I want to, I want to still get a bunch of questions in. I compare yeah. this to LeBron. Now I know you're not spending $10 million, $1.5 million on your body. Not maybe yet. You guys not, are, yet. Not, not yet. Not yet. Maybe you'll be the first gamers to do that. But what I'm trying to say is you guys are putting in the same steps, the same amount of preparation. Like I, I'll ask anyone on the podcast right now, because a lot of gamers are going to hear this. When you hear this, send us a message. Let me see how many of you are actually meditating. Or taking care mm-hmm. of your mental health. Or like I said, something I love you said is I also wake up in the morning and I go straight. I, I make my bed. First win of the day. Most people do I, that. My I second do. win is I go straight and I just read my book. So I read two chapters every morning. Yeah. I, I knock out books. Before I touch the phone. Then I go to the bathroom, do all stuff. Then I put my phone. Mm-hmm. So I love that you said that because in our generation, we can't live without our phones. Right. Facts. It just, Facts. It just is what it is. So, and th- the fact that you guys are, are so young and able to speak so maturely and I commend you guys, man. Much, much, much respect. Man, to you. You're just trying to make me blush. That's all it is. Like, like, see, like, that's all it is. Like, that's all. That's all. Hey, hey, Dad. Hey, hey, listen. You got to stop because I'm married, brother. All right. <laughs> I'm married. You got to chill, well, man. All right, all right, right Nav. All right, man. That's why these right, conversations man. are so powerful. But hey, okay, let, let me ask you guys this now. So we talked about preparation. Talk, talked about a lot about the gaming side, growing on Twitch. Um, you guys are continuing to grow, continuing to build your viewership back up to where I know it's going to be one day. I've had the last two, last two of my guests were pretty big influencers, a professional dunker, professional trainer, 300,000 plus on Instagram and stuff. So they're influencers. Now, I, I do see you guys the same way, but I want to ask you guys this question. What do you guys consider yourselves? Are you guys gamers? Are you guys creators? Are you esports athletes? Are you influencers? Uh, we are professional entertainers. That's the best way to put it. Um, there's, um, uh, we always say, don't, don't put us in a box. Mm-hmm. Because... Whatever you think we can't do, we're going to show up and do it. Yeah. So, you know, don't, don't put us in a box. Um, one of the things that Jay and I, we want to do is, is just be known for variety. Like, I don't, I, I want to, we want to be able to like do a YouTube original where we either go places and do random stuff. Like you just, like you just go to random jobs and just work a random job. Like I want to be able to do that. Like I want to be right. able to do shows and stuff for other people and whatever the case may be and just show people like, yo, it, we do this. This inter- this thing called entertainment. We do this, but just we just happen to be phenomenal gamers at the same time. But we actually do this. So no, we are entertainers. We are professional entertainers. I like that. And, and what's what's key about this is you guys are because something else I want to ask you is we're gonna talk about longevity. So you mm-hmm. touch on Ninja, like eight year grind, Adidas deal, all these crazy sponsorships, multi-millionaire, whatever else he has going on. He's on TV shows, all this kind of stuff. And I see you guys potentially going down a similar path in terms of you've already, you already passed the test. You called yourselves professional entertainers. You're not just boxing into a gamer or whatever it is. They're like, nah, we, we could be, we could be versatile. We could have our own TV show one day. We could have a gaming podcast. We can do this, and that. Mm-hmm. And then maybe we can go on dancing with the stars or whatever it may, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. And, and that's, that's key. So what do you guys think is like the main, the most important thing for yourselves or someone listening to build longevity? To build longevity. The closest thing, well, the best thing that I can tell you is to, uh, man, like, honestly, it's passion. Like you have to, you have to have passion because, be, because now that I'm understanding, you know, like how YouTube work, how Twitch works, like why people are remembered, like why when you bring up content creators, specific names pop out every single time. It is because if you watch them, you get a feel that you've never gotten before. And the fact that you can watch a YouTube video that may have dropped two weeks ago or three months ago or six months ago, and the video itself has so much potency and replay value to it, it makes you feel like you were there when it actually happened. So you know, it's it's with passion. It's living every moment in the moment, yeah. not just going through life on autopilot or going through the motions. Because when you go through the motions, you start to build bad habits, and you're you don't understand that your routine starts to affect you. Because 
when you when you're just going through the motions, you're not fully focused. You're just like, oh, okay, well, you know, mm -hmm. I'm just playing the game. But like, honestly, I got stuff. Else, I got something else to do. Yeah. You know, like I got videos set. You're not fully there. So when you're not fully there, people can see it. People can see it in your edits. People can see it in your streams. People yeah. can see it in your videos. People can even see it in podcasts. People can tell your energy. Mm -hmm. When your energy is off, people know. So it's just when you have passion, your energy follows because you care about what you're what you're attached to. You don't want to put out bad stuff when you care about what you do. You don't you don't want to do that. No, it's key. Uh, passion and consistency. This mm -hmm. two two main things come down to. Okay, so let's let's just kind of gonna run through like a bunch of questions because I know we, we're short on time. So, content creation. Um, every day you guys are streaming. How many hours a day you stream right now? Is it eight? Uh, Is it six? Roughly about. So roughly we stream. Uh, we'll stream about, six hours. Uh -huh. Six hours. Okay. Yeah. No, no, no. So we stream six hours in the morning, mm -hmm. like from 11 to like five. We work out, right? We do our yeah. workout yeah. stuff. Then we train. And yeah. then we'll come back on stream at like eight o'clock or nine o'clock. Yeah. And then stream another like four hours. So we stream probably about maybe nine to 11 hours a day. Mm -hmm. do you guys including with the workout, work, with the workout and all that stuff. Yeah. yeah. Very heavy. So how do you guys handle the content creation side? You guys are obviously editing everything in house, right? Mm -hmm. Right now. I think you guys are doing all the editing. Mm -hmm. so, where, where do you come up with the ideas for the videos and how, how oh. do you keep on you stream 11 hours a day it's tiring man how do you keep yeah. up with the schedule to be like, okay we streamed 11 hours how many pieces of content can come from that 11 hours i i, I, I told you really? um it's, it's man i told you the, the the content comes from our childhood it, it comes from it, it the reason why we don't want that energy is because of how we were raised yeah. We were raised constantly thinking, constantly working, constantly having to learn. Having, so 11 hour, a one stream can produce like four videos. Yeah. One stream can produce four, four or five videos, depending on how good our gameplays are. It can produce four or five, five videos, but we don't cheat our audience. So we'll only take like two videos from one stream. And then our intros are not something that you got. No, our intros are new our intros are not scripted at they're all they're not scripted so we shoot skits in front of our intros mm -hmm. because i want because i want i don't want you to go from twitch to youtube and be like wait i already saw this already <laughs> boo you give me the same stuff I'm like no 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 no. when you watch our youtube skits our, our intros you're getting us like we grew up watching the waynes bros kenan and kel okay. dave Chappelle, yep. uh, uh key and pill and the okay. one thing that has always inspired me is watching people taking these creative ways to take real life situations that happen and turn them into small skits that you can understand, right? That's what, that's what TikTok is, that's yep. what Vine is. Yep, yep. So Jay and I taking, like we have one skit um, where like I get knocked in the game and I'm like, Jay, come pick me up, come pick me up. And I'm like, Jay, he's behind me and Jay turns around in real life and goes, I don't see him, like, right? Like it's mm -hmm. just stuff like that and then I get killed. And I get mad at him. And it's just like, that's why you're dead and not me. Like, it's stuff like that. Like, like we want to say it all the time. Like, so your homie get knocked in, in Warzone. Yeah. And you're like, bro, if you stop going out there and stop thinking that you, that you, that you scum dash in formal, you wouldn't have got knocked in the first place. Mm -hmm. It's stuff like that. Like, we take, like, those little skits and try to turn those into, like, these funny moments. You know what I mean? And give people this, this other side of us that, that, you know, every YouTuber can't do. Like, every YouTuber can't give you that. And how we started YouTube, if you go all the way back to our first videos, mm -hmm. they're skits. Yep. They're not gameplay. They're skits. We started off with a Nike commercial. You know, you remember the old parody. basketball? You remember the old dribble commercial parody? Mm -hmm. well, everyone's favorite commercial, yeah. Mm -hmm. So we did one of those. We got, we got, we got so many, like, like we, we always try to 100% be ourselves mm -hmm. and also give people stuff that they have not seen before. Like one of the, our favorite, my favorite, Angie's favorite, is Corey Kenshin. Mm -hmm. Because Corey Kenshin is just, he's so out the box. And he's exactly how Jay and I are, how we first started doing YouTube. Okay, yeah. It's, but he took his skits and put them in his gameplay. So it's like, but Jay and I were already, we were already doing that. And to see somebody be successful from it for somebody who does variety, now the call of the community, they don't, they're not doing that. Like they're not, they're, ain't nobody doing that in their in they intros, but Jay and I are, and we've been doing it. We just you just gotta wait for it to for it to catch on. That's all it is. You just gotta wait for it to catch on and just keep doing it till you perfect it. So absolutely. No, I love it. So let me ask you guys this. Are are you guys registered 
uh, as a business. I'm asking this for a reason because I'll go into my next question. Like the LLC? Like the LLC, yeah, you guys, right? You guys retro as LLC? Off the top of my head, I don't believe I don't, so. I don't but so. I think we may have done it once. I think, or at least, you know, I clicked the page. I went yeah. to the browser. You know, I was on, I was on the page in, in, in Safari. I was on it. I remember it, but this, off the top of my head, no. This is no. what I'm going to ask you guys because, you know, the business side, you guys, at the end of the day, like, you're, you're, you're entrepreneurs. You're trying to be, right. up, you're making your own money. No one's paying you but yourselves, mm -hmm. right? So something I've seen recently is an uptick in gamers trying to understand the business side, to register the LLC, to have expenses, to actually write things off and to get paid properly and, you know, mm -hmm. handle things mm -hmm. as a, business as opposed to just being random yeah. have you guys put thought behind that in terms oh, of oh yeah yeah okay. oh oh um yeah. i mean one of the key things is uh, uh one of the biggest things that we learned was taxes um mm -hmm. we learned that the hard way boy um, oh, man <laughs> yeah man so so now um being now that you know again i want to say this one more time going from 2k19 where we had all of these views but we wasn't making that much money to now mm -hmm. we're making way more money with less views yeah. way more money than what we've ever made before um Everything that you do is a write-off. Everything that you do, from the, the money that you spend in game equipment to spend money in game. When you buy gas to mm -hmm. your 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 house, your lights, your your gas bill, your water bill, your phone bills, um the food graphic the, stuff. Uh graphic yep. everything the stuff that you buy when like when you subscribe to somebody else, when you do donations, when you um donate this, uh, I mean when you um uh, what is it called um uh, purchase somebody else's merchandise and you wear it on stream all of that stuff is is it's all write-offs mm -hmm. everything is a write-off and you just have to know keep track of everything you just please. have to keep track of keep it. track like, of everything you know please. and and, and be track. ready to be like yo hey listen uh this is all my business this is what it costs business expenses so when i go on vacation that's a business expense because guess where it's coming from my business puss bag so you know just it's <laughs> 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 so it's just it's just learning, like, like it's just different things. It's just learning, um, even from little stuff. Like, um, you might not think it, but when you buy a phone case and you record videos off your phone, mm -hmm. yeah, of course, you're using business it. expense. Yeah, it, it's it's like that's the type of stuff that we would learn that that we've been learning as a business. Like, like you know, um, the LLC. I, I we definitely do that, and For we sure. definitely about to get a bunch of our stuff. I, we definitely about to copyright both of our channels, mm -hmm. um, because I, you know. Uh, a lot of people be using our content that we don't even be knowing. Yeah, they be using our content on these little like compilation channels. Yeah. And I'd be like, I appreciate that, but you know, like my link ain't in the description. Like, right. Man. Like my like, link, my link in not in there. Like, nah, Somebody better nah, get this link. On. Somebody better put that link. And they be making like mm -hmm. they be having 400, 500,000 hey, views man. off it. Like, no, 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 no. I just want to shine light on that because I think that's a very important thing that gamers miss out on. Mm -hmm. Is just taking advantage of the business side and that you guys are a business, you guys are creators, mm -hmm. and I'm happy that you guys are doing that. So that's great. Um, we're gonna skip through a lot of stuff. I'm gonna have to interview you guys, interview you guys maybe at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. Okay, do this because oh, sure. that's gonna be fun. Yeah, but we'll, we'll, we'll do a follow up. I'll get to ask some of the questions we missed. Mm -hmm. okay. But I'm gonna I'm just gonna jump to the end here and kind of let you guys answer this main important question. So in life, like I said, you could have multiple champ. Some people may only have one championship. I know myself personally, I'm going to have hundreds, maybe thousands. You guys yeah. are going to be the same. You know, we're just all these big goals. So I want to know with everything you guys are doing and creating, I want to know two things. I want to know, I want to know what is your why behind everything you guys are doing. And then I want to know what the championships are, or even if it's just one or two right now, like tell me something Ooh, you're striving. I like that. I could just ask you. I'll why, say, why, why. you can say the why I'll say the championship. So, so the why, the, the question is why not? Like what's stopping you? Like what 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 is what is so bad? What is so wrong with you that you can't achieve and you can't achieve what you choose to be? Like what 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 why is it that you're so off in your own mind, but this person is so God sent, they're so special that you're not what makes you not special? You know, a lot of people always yeah, so perfect, think bro. Yeah. a lot of people always think so negative and they always go to, you know, what if it doesn't work? Right. Okay, well, what if it does work? What if it does? What if it does? What's yeah. a, what's what, a, what if it, what if it does? You How said would why? you know? What, what if it does? Why, why, here's the question too, mm -hmm. right? You said why, like, like, so why not? Why do you glorify this person, but you don't glorify yourself? The same way. Why, why do you praise this person for the same thing that you're trying to do? 
but you won't praise yourself. So every time that you speak about this person, they're this, they're that, they're this, they're that. And he's speaking about yourself and you got one good thing about yourself. I got a nice beard. <laughs> That's it? You coming at me like that? No, no, not you. I'm just saying, not you, not you, not, not right. you. No, let's I'm just saying, <laughs> I'm just saying, not you, not you. Yeah, not you. I'm just saying, in general, I'm just saying in general. Like, all you saw about is, I'm cute, mm -hmm. I'm attractive. Oh, but what about, why can't you give yourself the same accolades that person is giving themselves, even if you haven't achieved them yet? Yeah. The, 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 the question is not why, the question is, why not you? Don't you think that they wake up the same thing thinking the same question? They bleed the same blood. Why not? You. Why not them? Like, like they woke right. up every day. Like, like shout out to my guy Swag. Shout out to... Those Swag woke up every day saying, "I want to be the best YouTube content creator," and he just put the work in. The difference between you and them is you didn't do what they did. I saw this one saying. It said, "The reason what makes a master is because he's failed more times than a student will ever be able to account for." Mm -hmm. So. Because you are afraid to fail, because you are afraid of not being successful when you first start, that's the reason why you're like, ah, uh, you know, I gave it a shot. Like, no, we don't give shots. We achieve. If you want to achieve it, then you just got to be like, hey, why not me? I'm cute. I'm sexy. Why not me? I'm serious. Even I mean, if you're not cute, oh, I thought you were going to keep going. Who, I was, wait, oh, like, like, I was about to, was about to hey, hype it up. I was about hey, to hype it up. I've bad. seen females that, or dudes that, I would be like, hey, if I look like them, I wouldn't be a model. But that ain't my business. I ain't got no, I ain't got no right to judge somebody how to. If he want to be a model, let him be it. He, hey, yeah, good for you. Hey, congratulations. You better be the best you possibly can. I might not think that you're funny, King, but you up there on stage doing exactly what you chose to do, and you yeah. making a living off of it. I respect it. Yeah. The fact that people, the fact that you allow yourself to put so much negativity on yourself, saying why, 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 and not saying why not. That's the biggest, that's the biggest problem right there. You. Bro, you guys, I think one day, I'm going to say here in case it does happen so I can come back and <laughs> But I actually think one day you guys may end up doing like some type of TED Talk or, or just something around the culture of gaming and just how to succeed at that. Because I, honest, honest to God, bro, the way you guys, I'm just going to stop. Anyways, I'm going to stop there. He's blushing more than me. Blush. I know, right? Look, look at <laughs> He's he blushing more than me. That's you too much. Let, hey, let, me, get let me get the championships. What, what are you guys trying to achieve? Go ahead, Jay. Give me the championships. Now, do you want me to go down the whole list? Because, you know. Give me the top five. Give me the top five. Give me the top five. Top five. Top five. Number one on the list, streamer of the year. Right. For sure. Streamer of the year. Facts. Number two, Fruit Snack sponsorship. Facts. Because I'm fat. Number three, Logitech sponsorship. Facts. Because I love Logitech. Number four, I want I want our own action figure. Facts, because I want to hit myself with it. Number five, hmm. I'm not gonna lie, I want to do stand up. Yeah, I, I want to do stand up. And number six, up. I want to be in a Twitch ad. Wait, wait, and I got YouTube commercial, YouTube original. And I got one more. I want we I want to be the first. I want to be the the streamers to do our own live show, like with a live audience, live band. Oh and yeah, you know how like they do like you see Saturday Night Live. I mean that's Saturday Night Live, right? Mm -hmm. I love the mind. I love where you're going with that. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So I want to be the first streamers to do a show that's live. We come out, perform, do stand up comedy, bring in guests, then play video games in front of a live audience with a live band to go to commercial breaks and all the others like that. I want to be the first streamers to have a night show mm -hmm. or a day show, and whatever like a the show, and have a lounge like for a people lounge. to be like, "Yo, Train J will be performing in your city." This day, this day, come in like how you see um uh, the 85th South show. Mm -hmm. And I just want to be able to do something like that, but for gaming and bring on special guests to play with us and play Call of Duty, play Fortnite, whatever the case may be, and do it live in front of an audience to where people can actually hear people's reactions live and laughing live and still have a live chat on Twitch. Like, you know, like just I just stuff that we have that we want to do is just is is that's one of the championships that I'm like, I want to put that. In 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 the, in that bracket. So that was that was like a um like an Obama type moment, like a drop your mic type moment. Yeah. Or like that is one of the best ideas I've heard in a long time. Yeah. And that's gonna be achieved. Right. No, for real, bro. When you guys achieve yeah. that, that's gonna be a big thing. And you guys are on your way to doing that. And like I said, the personalities and what you guys are doing speak for themselves. So two and a half hours. 
I honestly wish we had another like hour because there's so much stuff I want to ask you. About. <laughs> <laughs> Later, because you guys, you guys are just so well spoken. You guys talk about so much stuff in depth, which I appreciate. And the amount of motivation, inspiration, and knowledge you gave throughout this podcast, it was the best podcast I've had so far. Thank you. Uh, I'm humbled to say, like, thank you guys again for coming on. No, thank you. Thank I'm excited. You. No, no, thank you. I'm ex- no, 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 I am. I'm nobody. I'm excited to watch the journey. No, no. What, what we say, man? Huh? Hey, what we say, huh? Hey, Did we, we say thank you? Hey, like, what we say, man? Hey, we Did we say man. thank you, huh? Hey, you ain't never seen two people stand up for you, hey, amen. <laughs> it got dark. <laughs> it got dark. Hey, yo, chill. Let everyone know if they don't know already. It's gonna be all over the YouTube videos and stuff. But just let them know maybe the schedule, where to find you guys. Uh, Twist that TV slash Trans J, uh, mm-hmm. YouTube.com slash Trans J, mm-hmm. um, TikTok, 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 dot, TikTok dot com slash Justin L. Hazard. And then um, um, Twitter. Twitter. What's your Twitter? Look, uh, I'm going to just do trade, your favorite. I'm going to put D- on screen. You guys just. <laughs> yeah, at, at Trey D. Hazard. <laughs> Justin L. Hazard. Uh, yeah, and then Alexei has. Yeah, make sure I follow my wife. Y'all also make sure y'all follow our. Uh, yeah, y'all got to follow the producer. Our, our Trey J. Twitter page. Out. We got to give a shout out to your wife. I don't know if she's in the room right now, but. Yeah, I would she is. She, yeah. yeah, so just give a shout out to her. You said her name yeah, was. Right. Thank you. Can you shout out. You just hear her? No, like for real, like, because I'm one of those people who is like a behind the scenes guy. So I know, not that I'm a producer like her, but I just know what goes on. Yeah. It's a lot of work. Yes, it's, it is. It's a lot of work. Behind, I always say Dev's the face of the brand, but it takes a great team to hold up a leader, like to hold yes. up the face. So you guys Absolutely. are face. She might, she might just be one person right now, but she's she got some big biceps. She holding you guys up. Yeah, like yeah. for real. The production I, I, I that she does is amazing. Back end, man. So look, you guys about to take a food break and go straight to streaming. So again, I appreciate yeah, the time. We're going to be doing stuff in the future, I hope. Hopefully more podcasts, hopefully collabs, all kind of different stuff. I'm going to so, end it on this. Is that Trey and Jay merch? Oh, yeah. yeah. 100%. Oh, yeah. 100%. Is it available? No. Is it available? No. No, <laughs> no it's not. No. No. no it's not. Is that, this is like OG. This is like yeah, vintage. This, so, yeah. like, if you got if it, you got, got it. it you, got and, you know. This is not new. This is older stuff. No, this yeah. is old. This is way oh, old. Okay, okay. Old. I, I, suddenly, I think I just saw it. So I was like, oh, this looks like it's. Mm. it's no, no, no. No, no, no. Shout out to the producer. Again, oh, they, washing the clothes and keeping them up to par because you know what I mean. The the, the fabric is still nice. There she go. Look, she, made, she, she made an appearance. So I appreciate you. <laughs> She's at her desk right now. So you know what I mean. <laughs> Thank you guys so much again. Much love. If you guys are listening, please go follow these dudes. I, t- I promise you, the best streams you're gonna see anywhere, any anywhere on the planet. Much success in the future. We're gonna stay in contact. Continue to build and grow together.